about seven years ago, there was a tournament by the name of RBT1 that took place in the spring and summer of 2014. We right now are obviously in 2021 with RBT5 here, but there's one similarity between the grand finals of that tournament back then and this grand finals right here, and that is Team Envy. Right now, we are on the Asian server on Team Envy's home. They are on Survivor side first, and for the grand finals right here of RBT5 on Vanel's stream, they are playing against Team Rehab. If you've been watching Competitive Left 4 Dead 2 at all over the past few years, you know that Team Rehab has also gone by the name Frag4 and also Pubsar, and they have been extremely dominant in international competition. And right here, they are going to stack up right against Team NV for not only the RBT5 prize, but to prove potentially which one of these two teams could be the best in the history of Competitive Left 4 Dead 2. I am Rails Barlow, one of your tournament administrators and one of your casters for today's game, and I am overjoyed once again to be joined for this Grand Finals cast by the one and only Mr. Dragon. Dragon, this is a meteoric match that we have in front of us today. Absolutely. I mean, this game is, what, over 11 years old and still over a decade since its conception? Here we are, still here in this undead game in every sense of the phrase. Um, <laughs> with, as you put it, like two of the greatest teams in, in the game's history. I mean, I, I mean, if you're anywhere and if you're a fan of Left 4 Dead 2, you should be watching this right now. Oh yeah, because this is going to be a home and away series that we have in front of us. It's the number three seeded NV and the number one seeded Rehab playing right here on normal hard rain. As I just mentioned, we're going to be on the Asian server first, Pan Chan right here. And Dragon, I think if we've seen anything from this tournament so far, Against Team Rehab, almost no lead is safe on your home server going to their EU server, but Envy are going to have to do the best that they can to get the largest delta possible here to start this game. And then I'm not sure if we'll be setting scores when we go to the EU server, but it is going to be 1-4 to four for both of these. When you're playing against a team that has this much coordination in terms of Frag 4 Dragon, you have to be absolutely on point on your home server, and they cannot afford to make a single mistake in this match, I don't think. When it's this caliber of both teams, any single mistake, any error could prove fatal in the end result. So you have to go with the assumption that no points can be spared. You can't afford to drop points anywhere. You have to give it your all 100%. Now, NV, I remember when I was casting with you in the semi-final match, they had a very slow start on their away server and they let a few errors run. But despite that, they got a hold of themselves, they put it together on the home server, and they absolutely trounced the final end score there against um, 44 biceps. So just because one or two mistakes can happen doesn't mean it's the end of the world by any means. Like, just one or two bad chapter scores, it, it could look bleak, but it's not the end of the world. Having said that, this is that one sort of scenario here where you just can't afford to make any assumptions about anything. You've just got to go with every point matters. Every single point matters. Just do not drop a single one if you can help it. Exactly. And the fact that this is happening on hard rain here on zone mod 1.9.6, I believe it is. This might be one of the last games. I think we were talking about this beforehand that features this version of zone mod with the all powerful distance Uzi plus the free spit. The thing about Hard Rain in today's game is that that map 4 has been extremely nerfed compared to how it used to be in Competitive Left 4 Dead 2. Because back in the day, if you, like, somehow found a way to not be ahead after the first three maps. The map four could be huge from that tank, of course, that can be played right at the start of it. But I honestly think the maps that are going to be the most important here, map one is pretty high up there, and so I would say is map three. Map four can still have that kind of turn chapter ability, but I'm looking to see which team starts ahead of the game and takes advantage of the fact that they are on their home server first. NV has the chance to do that right now, but I do believe that Across both games, we could be seeing the same kind of chapter have that ripple effect out as we get the rest of the game underway. Of course, for Team NV now, their lineup is a tad bit different than it was in RBT1. They have Kane and Prove playing instead of Hansuki and Makina, but I think the return of Flyby here for the playoffs has given them a little bit of an extra push, and I think if there's one lineup in the entire tournament that's equipped to deal with Rehab, it's probably the one that we have right in front of us here today. Absolutely, and as you've done the rundown for NV, I shall run down. Uh, rehab, we have uh, Dave, uh, Dungeon, uh, Dusty, and Rispo. Dave, of course, being Soul. Um, and yeah, as you said, I mean, this is probably... The fact that they've got Flyby back is quite a major thing because I don't think... 
I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I wasn't really watching any of the earlier matches in this tournament, but uh, did they compete against um, Rehab earlier on? H how did that match go for them? That match was decidedly won by Team Rehab. It was a little bit of a shocking result, but I do not expect this match to have that same kind of delta as we go live here with the RBT5 Grand Finals on their home server first for NV. It is Kane Flyby Kimchi Improve. Let's see what they're able to do against this first hit of Rehab. It is that 2 2 Boomer Spitter Hunter and Jockey. NV taking it as slow as they possibly can, trying to make sure that they can get around any kind of damage that the SI have set up for them. That Hunter is going to spawn in the back looking, I think, for some kind of wall kick, but the survivors still have two people on their team who have to get those guns, of course, so they're going to take this as easily as they can before they actually drop. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of exchanges going exactly like this, just due to the fact that both teams are going to be this careful. That hunter is going to get skeeted. Jockey lands for a split second onto Ellis and does get cleared. Single boom goes out, and once again, we see the Liquid SI dying last dragon. Team Rehab loves to go for those quad caps. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if the quad cap is what they're going for, then obviously but that, now there's a tank, actually. So they're going to have to wait for the quad cap just a moment. Tank is in the hands of Risburn, a.k.a. Brian. Um, he's getting one car in. He's trying to get the other car in as well. Craig as many options as he can for himself with those hittables. Um, how do you see this unfolding, Rails? So this is a situation where we're going to be seeing a hit go in right now. That's going to be a charger whipping. The smoker also is going to get cleared, and that rock gets blown out of the sky the same way that the hunter was. Even though Team Rehab are starting off with that red ping, Dusty's got about 143, and the rest are between 208 and 250. The one part of gameplay I would say that really carries over between low latency and high latency is this tank play. So I would expect to see Brian just trying to get as many cards in as he possibly can, but he's already down to just about 25% on his first pass and he's going to be careful i think to stay away from those uzis we have a boomer dying in the back and dragon he's on second pass now yeah boomer's dead he's on second pass he's got both cars in play i mean he's also got the alarm car if he chooses to use that but um they're gonna have to rely on a tri cap here i think the boomer's just pop but let's see what dave gets for his spawn he gets a charger um i don't know about that i think maybe a smoker might have been a better pick here they're just going to have to make do what they can, but Brian's taking a bit more chip, but he's now almost lost a thousand HP trying to get this car in. But he's not getting the angles he wants with them, and he's losing a lot of health as a result. He's still persisting with a car, but it flies right over. He's got to go in now for punches. He's got no other option. And then, oh, Charger's coming in. Charger misses. Jockey lands. Oh, my lands. God. There's a... Oh, Nick is left hanging on the edge after that punch. And um, Brian's yeah. just under 3k HP, but what do the survivors do here? They are going to have to try to push him as much as they possibly can. That punch was wild going out on to prove. Kane doing a really good job, though, pressuring this tank. They know that they cannot afford to have a full hit come in with that tank anywhere near them with any kind of health to do that kind of work. It's not a 3-cap, however, for the SI. It's a Smoker Boomer and a Jockey, as Brian is going to recommit here. Jockey going in from the side, Smoker as well from the opposite side. That is going to be a pull down onto the cars, but Brian misses the first hit before nailing the second. NV taking two downs off of that tank. The Boomer did whiff, and that was looking really bad for Team Rehab Dragon until that punch went out on to prove and ledge hung him. He was so close to dying on that punch. I don't understand why NV did not go one-on-one -on -one and pick them up. I mean, if they counted the spawn timers, they had ample enough time to get both survivors up at the same time. But being a grand final match on their home server on the first map, I can understand being more cautious than anything else. Oh, please, get up. Yeah, and that was a great amount of damage we saw overall for Rehab on that. The SI support doing a really good job of helping their tank, and that down onto Kane is going to open up the damage bonus as well on NV, as the next hit is already up at this choke for Rehab. It's a Spitter, Jockey, Charger, and Hunter for them. Let's see what they're able to do with that. Looks as though the Charger and Spitter are both coming from the left-hand side roof. Hunter on the right, and Jockey from underneath as the hit goes in. Hunter is going to land onto Rochelle. Charger's oh. going in the back there as well, and the Spit goes down for a bit of damage, but Dragon, that was a much better shutdown. Absolutely, yeah. The, uh, the Charger, I think, missed his rocket jump and then ended up uh, on... Uh, I think it was on the back of that pickup truck, actually. So... If a charger had actually gone something there with the spit, I think there could have been a lot more damage on the board for that particular SI attack. But I must say, despite everything that happened in there, it's a great recovery by NV. I mean, they could have nearly lost that particular round right there. But they still got a good bonus. Attack's coming in now. Hunter lands on Coach. Smoker pulls a Rochelle. 
Uh, I didn't see how much damage I actually got for that Hunter. Not a lot. The clear was pretty fast on that as well as with the smoker in the back. So it was a little bit more chip damage, but this is kind of what you expect to see from Envy now on the home server. That was a little bit of a frantic tank fight to start this off, but they've done a really good job shutting down the ensuing hits, and I think they only have about one more to take before they get into that safe room. Charger, Spitter, Boomer, Jockey, it's an open 2-2 here for them having to send this in. That Boomer is going to die. I think that's the right kind of call, Dragon, because with that kind of hit, it would be really hard to hit in that kind of open space. Absolutely, although they're not going to get quad cap of last attack because they still have a spitter. They have a charger and a jockey for support though, and they might have to send it in even though there isn't a full spawn available because NV are not wasting any time here. Charger comes in, misses completely, they baited out that charger really nicely. Hunter lands though, spit's going to land, they need to clear the commons of Ellis. Oh, Kimchi oh, wow. running through spit. I think he took a long way out of the spit by the looks of it. Yeah, that was an odd spread there. It looks like there might have been just one area where he could have gone to. Nonetheless, Envy do make their first safe room on their home server. 820 points to start. And that's something where I think on the tank, you know, almost getting death punched is one thing, but then that smoker that landed that allowed the tank to get that hittable, right? That was something that I think actually did more damage than the ledge hang, just because we saw Prove get picked back up and he still had permanent HP. You know, you ideally yeah. you wouldn't want to see a down go out on the tank whatsoever, but now it's going to really be Team Rehab Survivor that's going to have to not die on this tank against Envy, Envy Special Infected. Let's see if they're actually able to do that. And we have a survivor who is in the sky on a jetpack and ready up. Wow, that is what, what have I missed? Is this... <laughs> I don't know. That's just, you know, there are a lot of ways to entertain people during Ready Up, but I think that was one of the best to see right here in these grand finals. We are going live now with the second half of this first map. It's going to be a 2 2 once again for Team Envy. And Dragon, I expect to see Rehab approach it with the same level of caution we saw on the last side. Let's see if they actually do that as the Hunters pre spawn down below, going up top. Boomer lands a single boom, and the Hunter lands as well with a spit going down on top of that. On to Dave, but only a little bit of spit damage going out from that hit with a horde also coming in but that should be pretty easily dealt with due to just being one boom well a rehab's si got seven damage on their first attack i believe envy got 42 on the board for their first attack so this is already a pretty good start for uh envy's si and the tank is in the hands of flyby he too is going to be working his magic with those hittables um or that one not quite over the uh trailer just yet he's trying to get it over Guys get it on top of the attack comes in, a charger tries from afar. There's a smoker trying to get a sneaky tongue from the roof, but gets cleared as well. Yeah, and then sending that hit in with that, that was kind of like an open try cap there with the smoker and the hunter at least. I don't know if they're going to really want a charger for this. We kind of mentioned that in the last half that that might not be the most ideal support for this spot, but Flyby's doing a pretty good job of keeping some kind of sight. Now launching that car in close to coach, not quite going to land it, but Jockey Boomer Hunter is going to be the support here. Flyby is still bouncing around pretty far away from the survivors, maybe trying to get a hit off of this, and that's going to be a single move going out. That could be a little dangerous there just due to the ping, and now he's going to be looking to commit with both of these cars as Team Rehab are doing the best they can to not die from that hittable, and they do manage to dodge it. Tank is looking for a corner now onto Ellis, getting the first punch. There is a jockey trying to complete this double cap up top. That hunter got a good amount of damage onto David. Now the tank is right there to help out as that jockey went to the back. Tank is now pushing Nick into the corner as the pull goes out onto Coach. This is going to be a full end cap onto Dave as the tank decides to target a different survivor now. But he is going to die, Dragon, with just about the same amount of damage we saw on the last half, I would say. Great spread, actually, by Flyby. I think he realized that because the hitables weren't landing, he thought the next spec zone was right. Spread the love. If I get an end cap, even a better result. And that's exactly what happened. Although... <laughs> Wrist burner there is still rocking 100 HP, doing a tremendous yes. job holding on to that. I'm pretty sure MV are going to want to do something about that before they reach the safe room. Indeed they are, and they have a chance to do that right here. Charger, Hunter, Boomer, and Spitter for MV's next hit, and honestly, it, with a tank like that that's pretty survivor side on whatever the ping is, it's going to come down to the hits afterward and how well Team Rehab are able to take them. And that's why they have Dave in his first position there, walking across the fence, trying to get as much common dead as he possibly can. There is going to be the double cap momentarily landing with that hunter landing in the back. And there is that spit damage also going out 
onto Team Rehab. Let's see if they're able to push their way through this boom and get at least one more choke point down before that next hit is up. Hey, I'm reloading. Yeah, um, definitely Rehab is certainly keeping true to their form throughout this tournament for the past several years. I mean, only sustaining one in cap on the away server during that tank and still going very strong. I mean, taking quite a bit of damage. Double cap going, they're taking, Smoker and Jogger taking the same victim, but Coach has been ridden down below and a charger goes as well. Just as I was talking about their form, suddenly, wow. oh my goodness, Rex. Right? That is a full end cap going out onto Dusty with that charger landing onto Dave in the front. And that was a situation where they had a quad to contend with. It obviously wasn't the quad cap, but they can be so deadly in other ways so long as the SI are set up on that. So that was a great hit by Team Envy going out. And this boomer is looking for some kind of arc boom, it would seem, on to Coach. Prove trying his best to get this to land, but it is going to be a popped boomer with two other spawns ready to pin the survivors with that spitter. They're probably going to look for some kind of charger here, Dragon, I think, as the survivors work their way forward. They don't have any pills left to their name, however, and Dusty is slow. Yeah, I, I can definitely see... Dusty and well, maybe Soul can probably keep intact and save him without another in cap. But unless they get their hands on some more spare pills, um, I think Dusty's probably going to end up being black and white before they reach the save from. Um, and this looks like another huge potential attack here with uh, three SI on the roof. Shocky and Hunter coming in. Oh, Charger landing, spit as well onto Ellis in the corner. Wow. And he's um, a, the SI with for NV are on point here. I don't know if that's. Like, mostly they're just their coordination, or if it's a combination of that, plus um, rehab, struggling with the pings a little bit. But NV are doing what they need to do. Oh, yeah, I mean, after that tank, we kind of mentioned it a little bit ago, of course, where it's like, what are the other hits going to be able to do? This is picture-perfect synchronization from NV so far on this first infected half for them. Looks like they're going to be sending a hit right here. Hunter does get blown out of the sky by Brian there, Wrist Burner doing the most he can to preserve that bonus as they go forward, but this is a situation where they were able to send that hit in because three survivors are slow on this. Nobody's black and white, but that damage bonus has taken an absolute beating. It's all health bonus now on Wrist Burner, so if they're able to get any kind of damage onto Rochelle, that would be the ideal for Envy, and they're going to have one more chance to do that with this Hunter Boomer Charger Jockey setup. One survivor, that being Dusty, is actually already at one, and they're going to down him before the SI are able to go in, but he's now black and white, so they can either hit really Coach or Rochelle to get this bonus back down. A kill on Dusty would be a really good advantage for Envy on this last hit. Let's see if they're actually able to get that advantage by sending these SI in. It's a little bit of a Baiting game though, once again, with Rehab taking their time. Hunter's bouncing around, Charger does land in the safe room. Hunter lands on oh, to Rochelle, and Dusty he's... is dead. Oh my Dusty's goodness. Dusty said it. It's almost like Rehab were trying to play NV zone specific game that they're used to being playing for absolutely years. They caught him out on the bait attempt, and still, they got a death, they got an in cap. And the charger just tries just pumping the door to stumble all the survivors. But they do make it in, albeit with one short and only 66 bonus. Yeah, and that's the situation where after that tank, like we said, it was almost the same damage that we saw from both sides, but those hits afterward, you know, you don't usually think of Hard Rain Map 1 as having a whole lot of hits in the chapter, but that was Team Envy taking advantage of every single one that they possibly could have, and getting damage that was really, I think, great for them on each hit like that after the tank was done. That bodes well, I think, for Envy's SI coordination. They need to keep this up on Survivor, though, just keep trying to get each chapter to give them a wider delta and we say that every time when it comes to home and away matches right but this on hard rain because it is one to four even though there are only a couple hits on each one of those chapters they have to make the absolute most of them while team rehab probably are going to have to rely more on these tanks to get their damage done 58 percent on this map is going to be about when the survivors are halfway through the sugar mill, I'd say. They have the option to either push it forward or take it back, and we'll see how aggressive Envy wants to play it, because we are going to be going live with the first half of map two here in the grand finals, and that first hit dragon is going to be a charger jockey, boomer, and a smoker with a Dave tank at that point for Team Rehab. This is the ultimate separation lineup right here on the first hit. Um, I don't think Envy are going to be aware that it is that particular lineup, so they need to be a little bit more cautious than they usually are. I mean, having said that, though, Envy do usually play like at a very slow-paced sort of momentum. 
they rather play on their own terms with their own tempo. And that's what allows them to shut There's down most back. hits really effectively. Um, and here they be, I guess, uh, Boomer, Boomer gets popped, Charger goes in, Charger lands, a Smoker lands as well, Jockey unfortunately did not land on anything, so it was a momentary double cap, but very quickly shut down, only one, uh, damage pound from that, uh, Charger there on to Mick. And that 10 damage from the Charger landing is all the SI got on that hit, and Team NB are gonna be making quick work of this next area in the Sugar Mill as they work their way forward. Let's see what team Rehab oh. have got for this. It's gonna be a Spitter, Boomer, Hunter, and Charger. Vanel has been kicked for uh, command spamming, so you have to take our word for it before she actually gets back into the game. It is gonna be that 2-2 as the survivors work their way forward. Pretty high damage potential with the Charger and the Hunter. Hunter is gonna go in, is not going to land. Charger is gonna jump from the top level and get absolutely melted. Dragon, this was pretty much just a quad cap sack from the special one infected as the Spitter and Boomer did die last. It was quite a casual sack as well, to be honest. I mean, they all went in one by one. I think the Hunter and Charger were more concerned about just doing nice little parkour up top the uh, scaffolding and the ramps rather than actually trying to land any hits on the survivors. But um, as you said yourself, there is a quad cap now. And it's in this particular area as well, which can be quite dangerous for the survivors if they're not careful. Jo Smoker does land, Charger lands, Jockey gets shut down, Hunter does land. Everything gets shut down so very quickly though. And only minimal damage on the ball rails. Yeah, and honestly landing those quad caps is hard enough when the pings are even, but in this case that was a red ping quad cap trying to land, getting very quickly cleared as you mentioned before. And that really is the only damage they've gotten onto the board, 24 as a team total, as the tank is now up into the hands of Dave in a pretty difficult spot I would say for the special infected, but a boom here would be absolutely everything for the SI, either on that commit or before. That charge is going to go in, not going to land, getting a punch or two though onto Rose shell boomer gets shut down jockey as well is going to die and dave is pretty content i would say to stand up in this window keep a little bit of sight if he can peek it but he's also really concerned about those distances he's dragging because in this version of zone mod they rip tanks apart from range you do having said that though only kimchi is the one with a, with a standard uzi for range the other two are carrying standard silence ones um dave uh, aka soul is already on his second pass he just lost a boomer yeah, he's going to have to commit before that spawn, I think, is all the way up there. It's going to be a smoker and a hunter for the other two supports as Dave is trying to work his way in from the left-hand side with that pipe. Let's see if the smoker can get any kind of pull for him as he is being shredded. Getting a nice punch to start, though. On to prove as Ellis is now being backed towards this smoker. There the pull is going to go out. Another punch is going to go on to Nick. Hunter is still not dead until now. The tank, though, is also going to die after that very short commit there, Dragon, that was a shutdown, essentially, by Team Envy. Absolutely. I mean, they did very well to position... They got caught out by a long arm, especially Nick at the beginning. But um, they did very well to mitigate the damage there. It was more or less a support that actually piled in most of the damage, proportionate-wise, I would say. Because um, Soul's tank only got about two punches in the end, and obviously had to commit... He had no other choice without Boomer being popped. He had to go in with a few spawns than he would have liked. Boomer again getting popped, just as I mentioned there. Um, it seems like they're trying to save themselves for a better attack here, utilizing the Spitzer. Hopefully, they'll probably get a Charger. Yeah, that would be good for them, obviously, on the staircase, but it's going to be difficult for them to get those pins in on them without a smoker, I would say, just because with this low latency and how Team Envy are playing, you know, they're doing a good job of having the shotgun go first, clear everything out from behind him, and then I expect to see Proof maybe back up here if he knows it's a hit going in. Jockey and Charger both going to go. Jockey does get M2. Charger gets completely shut down. The Hunter, though, does land with a spit going down on top of that, but that is the only real damage to write home about from that hit. Jockey dying as well, and that was what I was kind of seeing there, Dragon, because even though they have that strong choke point with those stairs, it's so easy for the survivors on their home server to sidestep that charger and really not have to deal with a whole lot unless they got pulled off the side. Indeed. What's interesting here, I mean, I'll mention it actually just after this attack, because this, um, it looks like the SI are ready to go in now. They have a Smoker, Charger, Boomer, and a Hunter. Um, Hunter goes in, gets geared, Smoker tries point from distance. Uh, I'm not sure where the Charger actually went, but Double Boom does land, but it's an event anyway. So the column is just going to be redirected. But as I was saying, uh, Rails, 
I actually kind of view this as quite an integral map for the Hard Rain campaign because it's not just because it's an event, but it's quite an endurance campaign at the same time, and it's very, it's very susceptible to like the quality of tank play as well, more so than other maps. I feel um, that could have a huge effect on the end score. I mean, this is quite a sizable chapter with a decent uh, sized sort of total bonus, so to speak. So the fact that NV are doing this, let's say, even though it's on their home server. They're going on this lengthy map with no in caps sustained. Um, if they could just keep it going to stay for it, this is quite a significant result, I think. I completely agree with you there. And the thing is, this cane field, both on this map and the next, can be so utterly perilous for survivors, especially when they're on higher ping. There is no quad cap, though, for rehab. It is going to be that charger jockey hunter and boomer, so no smoker either to create that separation. But the hit is going to be coming in. Charger's going for the long charge here, landing it as that hunter lands as well. But that is going to be a quad boom with all these common coming out onto them after those pinners landed just for a little bit. But Team NV absolutely not really worried about this horde as they work their way forward. They know that if they hold W right now, they can probably make it to the safe room before the next hit is up. Kane is a little bit in the back, but this is going to be the last ditch hit for Rehab on this chapter. And they do not even get it. That is 2,052 points for Team NV on their home server so far, and Dragon, I think you nailed it. This is a situation where if they can get any kind of damage on their SI side prior to the tank and then get good damage at the tank, this could be the first real lead of the series that we see opening up for NV. Oh yeah, and as I was saying in the semi-final match as well last week, um, I now adhere to that thing I was talking about, where if you can average a minimum of like a thousand points per chapter on your survivor side, and you're in really good setting for uh, the whole contest. And um, that's what they've done now. I mean, they were a bit behind on the first map because of what happened with two in caps on the survivors. But they've, they've certainly rectified that now. They're back where they should be, I think, score wise. Exactly. And this first hit now is going to be a jockey, charger, smoker, and a boomer for Team NV. It is that great separation hit off of the roof here, plus maybe a cross where the smoker is looking to do something. But Team Rehab are going to take it pretty slow, I would say, just trying to clear out the common as much as they can. Here comes the baiting timer, however, that will force them forward before too long. And, I mean, this could be huge if they manage to get this separation from the front with the multi-cap going in. But there is going to be the pull and the charge and a jockey oh. landing in the back as well. Oh on goodness. to Dungeon. That is another example of a great amount of separation going out from Team Envy's SI and Dragon. They did that on the first map and are trying to continue that right here. Reloading. Yeah, I mean, this is their home server. I mean, it's completely different. It's completely reversed to what happened for the semi-final match. They played their away server Reloading. first. They know they got a major advantage on their home server and they know how to fully utilize it. So they're doing this now, whilst they've got that sort of points delta available to them. Um, but now the next hit's coming in. Smoker Hunter, Spitter and Charger. Charger tries going in, but misses completely. Smoker try pulling out of the back. Hunter and Spit lands. Charger lands a fist on someone. Uh, a bit of damage actually going out on that second attack, Rails. But the bit for it from... Um, actually, sorry, I'm getting the teams mixed up. We're still envy on SI. I got confused for a second there, my apologies. No worries, that was an example of the pounce landing with a little bit of death spit on top, but because the spit spread was a little bit away from the survivor, that was an ability for Wrist Burner to kind of just move out of there without taking a massive amount of damage, so... As long as they're able to continue that, we'll see if they are able to keep shutting down these hits with just minimal damage. But this choke point is pretty fierce, and it is probably going to be the last hit for the SI prior to that tank spawn. Charger, Brimmer, Hunter, Jockey for that. And again, I mean, Rehab, with their higher ping here, they're obviously going to be playing more conservatively, but as people are mentioning in chat too, it's like, we gotta see what they're gonna do when they're on green ping in the next half, so NV really can't be comfortable with any kind of result until the survivors are dead, and they're gonna be going in with that jockey landing, pulling a survivor outside! Charger is not going to land, but that hunter in the front, that is a huge amount of damage going out. This Charger getting so many punches onto Dusty, that's an in-cap onto Wrist Burner, and while I just said that they can't be happy with any SI result too much because of how Team Rehab are going to be on their home server. That is just about the best they could have done on that hit. They can crack open a bottle of champagne to that. That was so well timed. The separation, the hunter landing and the survivors somehow going back and dropping behind and getting a full in cap before this tank even shows up, which is doing so right now in the hands of Brute. A boom does land onto Nick at the back. There's a bit of delay of spit. 
Oh, the jockey's landing, but the survivors this time are there to help rescue her. And the smoker's getting a scratch or two on Alice's head as well. Exactly. Prove doing a good job of this parkour in the silo here inside the sugar mill. Looks as though he actually is considering some kind of commit here or maybe just a couple curve rocks. Throwing it around the corner, not going to land it though because it breaks against that wooden board. There are still commons trickling in. Now this charger goes in, landing onto Nick, but it does get instantaneously cleared. This tank is looking to throw a couple more rocks, but honestly I think it's going to be important for him not to take that much chip here. Boomer as well is going to whiff from NV support right there. Our rock is going to be thrown. He's gonna land it onto Dave with that hitbox right over the top. Oh my goodness, he's he's taking just about a thousand chip, but that rock, I don't know if that was worth it, Dragon, but he managed to get that damage first. Um, I'm just stunned that that rock somehow managed to fit through that time. The gap looks smaller than the rock itself. I wonder if he pull that off. I don't know, but that's an example where those R rocks can really clip on the survivor's hitboxes, even if they're crouching, even if they think they're far away. It is going to be an open field tri cap with that smoker, jockey, and hunter for the potential support here. Let's see if he decides to send it in. Indeed, he's going to. Smoker's looking for an early pull, but I think the survivor's out of range. The jockey, though, is going to land onto Nick with a rock being picked up and landed onto Dave. Proof going for this corner now onto Nick, and there is a pounce landing with one survivor still slow, getting the punch onto Coach across the map, and now getting even more damage onto Ellis. Rock's going to be picked up, thrown in, landing onto Ellis once again. Tank going for the in cap, and he's going to get it. Oh my goodness, this is so much damage, and that rock goes in and lands around the corner, Prove with an awesome tank in this open field. They're going to be trying to troll this pickup as well. Dusty is the only survivor left up in this scenario. This Boomer also has to land, but the Charger is just bouncing around here. Boomer does not Whoa. land, though. Oh my goodness, this is so close to a wipe. There's the spit going in, and it barely does reach, but Dragon... That was catastrophic for rehab. Absolutely. I mean, Envy might have felt like they're going to go wipe there, but nevertheless, they have to be pleased with that. I mean, three in caps. Coach is black and white, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's, he's black and white now. They've got no spare bills. Dusty's the only one carrying bonus, assuming they even make it to the safe room. Um, <laughs> Envy are just hitting the ground running hard right here. Indeed they are, and they have a quad cap now to use against a pretty hobbled survivor team with that ping that we keep coming back to. Jockey bouncing around, trying not to die though, now down to about 50, that could be the quad. Almost dead, but that jockey is still alive now in the back with very low HP as the survivors are trying to work their way inside. Looks as though the jockey is going to be coming from that right-hand side or maybe going for some kind of distraction just because it is that low. Dusty is bleeding as well with that permanent HP that he has in the front. He's looking to maybe skeet this hunter that's on top here, but the bleed is real right now for Team Rehab. Not quite able to find that hunter yet, are they, as they continue moving their way forward, but these residual common right here might be able to cause some kind of pain for them as this hit goes out and there's the death there's the pounce and oh. the jockey already lands that is the wipe going out onto team rehab with this charger trying to get more punches onto dusty and it's actually not quite the wipe it's going to be just a death but dusty is down to just about one hp this is going to be quite hard for them as they work their way forward he literally is one hp getting these revives it's the closest thing to a wipe that could have possibly happened in that area yeah, I mean, he's one HP, only one in cap, though. The other two, I've got two in caps. He's boom, is just delaying the pickup. It's a boom onto Nick, who's already down. They've got a spit of the hunter and charger. I think this is, this is over now. Got to be, surely, yes. Exactly, so that pretty much was the wipe in that area anyway, and this is the Delta opening up. 1,312 points separating these two teams on Envy's home server. If they're able to make the safe room with bonus on the next map, it's really going to depend on where the tank spawns, of course, but... If they're able to keep this kind of pace, that would give them the best opportunity possible to hold up against Rehab on that EU server, but they have to absolutely maximize this next map coming up because there is such a high potential for bonus thanks to the map length. This is one of the maps that hasn't been touched as much, I would say, over the years, right? And if they make the safe room with a big bonus on this and find a way to wipe 
rehab in the field or something like that, or maybe on the tank, that would be huge. And it's going to be at 55%, so I believe that's going to be at the silos after they work their way through the sugar mill. These hits inside the sugar mill and beforehand, though, can all be catastrophic for a survivor team. And it starts here with the field dragon. I don't know what team rehab are going to do for this, but they might want to try to go for some kind of quad with the survivors and able to see a whole lot in this classic choke. You might be right, but then Envy could be wise to that. I realize they're trying to go for a quad cap and might just try and be as hasty as possible in negotiating the uh, field. So um, we will see how that plays out. I mean, so at least for the first attack, they have a smoker charger hunter boomers. This is quite a, I mean, there's no spitter, but it's still quite a decent setup here. If, um, if Rehab can play this right, they have a great opportunity to cause some real separation and damage on Envy. But we know all too well how cautious Envy are in their survivor style. And they are not going to be dropping points that easily. Reloading. No, they are not. And they're going to be working their way into the field, holding shift as they go. And it's going to be that smoker charger looking maybe for some kind of pullback in the other side of the field. But actually, they're going to be readjusting now, going to maybe hit them a bit later as Envy are now on this right-hand side. All of them walking through <laughs> with the absolute utmost caution that they possibly could on this hit it's actually kind of wild to see all four survivors just shift walking as a unit just trying to get these spawns to go because they know there's a potential spawn on the right hand side over there plus there's also this open area here next to the pipe where they have greater visibility but they are taking their time so precisely as they move their way through the hunters pre-spawn at the end charger is in the back hunter does go in but gets immediately cleared smoker not being able to find the pull until now that charger is going to get a charge forward and is going to get one slam for its troubles but on the list of things that could have happened to them in that field a charge with a pound is something that they're probably willing to take as they get into the elevator it could be yeah it could be so much worse for them but and that's always something i've liked doing actually in this because you never know what exactly is going to go down in the field so you as survivors need all the options you've got in your hands you just need to basically take it slow take it at your own pace and just keep the si guessing that's what they were able to do there in that scenario. Like I said, the precision of their shift walking there is a beautiful sight to see due to the fact that they have been on point on their survivor side as much as their SI. The team chemistry really showing itself now, especially after that addition of flyby for the top 16 as we mentioned before. So let's see if they're able to continue that pattern as they work their way towards the right stairs. It's going to be a smoker, hunter, spitter, and jockey for this hit. Hunter is pre-spawned down below, looking for that wall kick. I wouldn't be surprised to see them drop to the back and take the second level from there as they continue baiting these commons out. Rochelle blocking the spawns on the top as well while the rest of the unit does work onto those common. But now, that bang timer is going to be down to just about 20 seconds, forcing Envy forward. There's the wall kick going in. Jockey's looking for it as well. Spit goes oh. down and gets a little bit of damage onto that from the free spit spread. But once again, Dragon, nothing really huge going out there. Uh, I don't know if Flyby does anything like Yoga or Qigong or anything like that in real life, but he managed to successfully block that spit projectile with his back mm -hmm. um, and prevented Coach from taking, or oh, whoever it was, he got pounced by the Hunter, even more damage. So uh, well done to Flyby there for unwittingly saving his friend's skin some more. But so here we have a tank up in the hands of Dungeon. And there is a Hunter, Boomer, and Charger coming in now. Actually, Hunter's going in. Charger's going for a long-distance glory charge that avails him nothing. Hunter tries pouncing on someone but doesn't and gets chipped completely down. Indeed it did. And this tank in the hands of Dungeon, a.k.a. Spongy, is trying to work his way around, I'm fairly sure. They kept a Boomer in the hands of Dusty here for that single boom that is going to land onto Ellis out in the front. Very aggressive positioning here from Envy, looking for anything they can possibly get on that tank. And now the Horde is going to be coming in as well from the front. A little bit delayed, actually, as this tank is going to be looking to rotate on the left-hand side. But the Uzis are right there, trying to get chipped through this wall. As the tank now is going to be working on his transition in, maybe even deciding to climb to the top and then to commit. But only about 500 damage there onto that tank. Until now, he's not even climbing to the silo, getting shot a lot oh, by those no. Uzis. For this commit, it's going to be a Jockey Charger and a Smoker. Charger in the back is going to land. Smoker's going to land too, but they clear it. And the tank is getting a long arm punch onto Rochelle. Going for the Jockey target next. But if the survivors are able to hold S away, this could be the extent of the damage. It's a down on to Prove, and that's all she wrote. Yes, yes, I need some help. Uh, prove was already sort of being the tampon for NV, and he's got in cap now. So it's not like the perfect record by any means, but it's still a very strong position for NV to be rocking on the survivor side. Um, 
they could easily, the way they've been playing this game so far, they could easily make it to the safe room without sustaining another end gap. But that's not to, that's not to downplay anything that Rehab can pull off SI wise. They're still, they've still got a very good shot at this. Indeed they do, and this hit's gonna be working in. Charger is going to land, and the Hunter's gonna land as well for that double cap, but the spit is a bit late going out onto Coach there. He's able to kite his way out of most of it by jumping up and onto that pipe, and this is the thing. There are only really about three hits, I would say, left, unless something catastrophic happens to NV for this map, and if they're able to work their way into the safe room with this bonus, that would be absolutely huge, because then the pressure is gonna be on Team Rehab with that ping to deal with the field, deal with the tank, deal with the stairs. All of that is going to be uh, just a series of challenges for them with the higher latency. Right here, though, it is a quad cap for Team Rehab. Charger, Hunter, Smoker, and Jockey Dragon. They're looking to come from up top, it would seem, as the survivors work their way in. Let's see if they're actually able to do work on it. That Hunter lands in the back, Smoker landing in the front, along with that Jockey, oh, but Nick... I can't get a spawn! Oh, he can't, and that Jockey was cleared very well there by Prove, I would say, and it's just the Charger left. I think that was a little bit of unfortunate timing there on the side of Rehab because had those pins been able to land for a bit longer then the Charger might have gotten the spawn but that's the only spawn now separating Team NV from this last hit as they work their way towards the safe room there is no spit hit yet going in either inside the building Boomer spawns up gets a nice double boom Charger is going to whiff onto Nick spit goes down onto nothing at the same amount of time getting a couple punches though that Charger on to fly by but Dragon that's it and they're gonna work their way in very well played by NV. They normally play very slow and cautiously, but in that particular moment, they realized that they were going for a quad cap. It didn't pan out for them. They then hurried their way to the safe room, going completely like full speed ahead. And we'll look at the result now. I mean, 3.2k after three chapters. Exactly. And I think after that, they did take a bit more damage on those last two hits than they had been before, which is honestly saying that, you know, they didn't take them as impeccably as the last one, but that is still the exact bonus that they need. And Dragon, I honestly think on both servers for the away team, this could be the most perilous choke that both of them have to deal with when it comes to this cane field. Absolutely. I mean, if, if Rehab are concerned about, you know, saving as many points as they can, can, they just, they need to tackle it exact same way NV did. I mean, they're on higher pings. There's far less room for error. Um, if they don't copy what Envy did, I'd really be surprised by that. Unless there's an early SI attack going in before the field. Mm, let's see, because it is going to be that Boomer Charger, Smoker, and Hunter, and it's going to be a Kimchi tank as well for Envy if Rehab get to that point pretty much unscathed. Let's see if they're able to do that. Clearing out all the common in advance, and they're probably going to slow play it more than other hits that they probably did in this game just because they know this is a high stakes hit, but they're actually going for the hit before the cane field here. Charger's going to land in the back, and the Hunter lands in the front. That is a beautiful triple cap going on to Team Rehab. I don't think they expected that at all, but now they are going to hold W through the field. Oh, I mean, few people might question the wisdom of attacking before the cane field, but I mean, NV proved it was definitely worth it, landing that tri-cap there. And who knows, they might even have an attack ready before... Actually, no, probably best to save their spawns. It's probably just a bit too late for them to try another attack before the elevator. Exactly. I think that was what they gave up to get that early damage. And, you know, in a situation like that where they could have sent it in the field, maybe it would have gotten a bit more damage than this. But for that trade, I think they have to be kind of happy with this overall, just because it is like 82 damage so far. And now they have a pretty strong hit for the stairs. That Spitter, Charger, Hunter, and Jockey. This is one of the ideal hits that you would want for a closed space like this. And we'll see exactly how Envy wants to use it. We'll see if they also get a bit creative with this hit as well. I like the fact they did that just because they're trying to use the element of surprise on Rehab, but Rehab are probably going to be trying to take this stair choke with as much patience as they can because they know they really can't afford somebody bleeding before this tank. Everybody yeah, they cannot, they cannot incur another repeat of uh, the map 2 tank where they went into it with one person already in cat. Um, there is Spit, a Charger, Hunter, Jockey, so in this particular area as well, ch Charge Spit could be completely lethal. Uh, Charger, a uh, double cap's already going in, Charger missed, um, fortunately for Rehab, but a bit of Spit damage on there, a couple of fists onto Nick as well, 
I was actually still pretty decent for of damage there, Rails. Exactly, and it doesn't seem as apparent because it's spread out on the survivors. Like, if they had gotten an in-cap, that would be a visible representation of just how much damage they did onto one person. But this is some really nice spread prior to this tank, which is going to come up in the hands of Kimchi. He has been playing some of the best tanks that I think I've ever seen in competitive Left 4 Dead 2 over the past couple weeks in the quarters and also the semis there, right? He's going to be trying to make his way to the right-hand side. If he can get anything even close to a wipe here, that would be utterly amazing for Team Envy. And he's going to be rotating to the back here, climbing over this wall, and he has that separation 3 cap here, Hunter, Jockey, and Smoker for it. I think we might actually see him maybe trying to commit with this, just because I don't see better spawns really coming out for him, but he also could choose to play Rock Tank with the survivors on that higher latency. Looks like he is going to be working his way up to the top, only taking about 300 damage until right now. He is going to be working his way in. Hunter spawns in the back, going for a separation hit there as that smoker lands onto Nick. This is going to be the down going out onto Spongy. Kimchi with 4k HP left, trying to do the best that he can in this area. He does not have Ellis, and now he is going to go behind the trailer, throwing a rock around the side, not going to land. He should be pretty much dead here, so long as the survivors don't eat another one of these rocks, but there is going to be a rock going out onto Wrist Burner as the tank pushes his way towards him, going for the in-cap punch and getting it. Charger and Boomer are both up. The tank has 500 HP, landing that rock. Boomer gets shut down. That's pretty good damage for that field, I'd say, Dragon, and it was almost looking like a wipe until that Boomer pop went in. That is going to be a delay spit, though, going out, and this Charger in the hands of Kane can still maybe try to do some work with this. Even though it's not a wipe, that's still very good SI result there for MV. I was kind of surprised actually that Kimchi didn't like go straight for Ellis, I think, behind the truck. Um, although he could have been shot from underneath the truck, actually. There is a gap there where the survivors can shoot through if they wanted to. But uh, he could have got an in cap there on Dusty, I feel. I mean, in the end, he got one in cap anyway onto Nick. But it. next attack is up. Charger jockey has to make a smoke pulls at the front. Hunter's trying to land at the back as well. Charger comes in pretty late and misses his charge. Um, not very much damage on the board there for NB rails. No, I mean, this is a situation, too, where the game so far has been the hits outside of tank, where Envy's damage has really been dealt. The tanks have been good so far, but they have really put their faith in the strength of those other hits that they've been sending in. And if they can make something work here, maybe get another set of pills committed or something like that, that would help them for this last hit, because this 2-2, Jockey, Boomer, Spitter, Hunter, isn't the most amazing thing to be sending on to the survivors. That Hunter, I think, has been spotted as well by Wrist Burner. Boomer gets popped immediately. The Jockey lands for a bit of damage, but this is actually proving to be a better map for Rehab, obviously because the tank is in a spot that isn't really special infected sided, but they've done a better job as well on those hits outside of the tank. Yeah, like very minimal chip coming in on the last couple of attacks for NB and Rehab have just got to sustain one more attack and if they can actually make the save from even with the bonus they've got here, that's still quite a result for them. Charger spawns on top. Smoker gets destroyed at the bottom. Smo oh, Charger goes in with a spit as well. Oh, a spread rails. That's oh, that was so unfortunate for Team Rehab. That spread was incredible. If that Hunter had landed in the front, it would have been even more catastrophic. But Dave managed to get the skeet. I don't think they're going to have to deal with a full hit again. But there is going to be one spawn for Flyby coming into the queue right now. It is just a boomer, though. So this is going to be a safe room made by Team Rehab with that bonus. Honestly, I think we can see that same thing being done by Envy on the opposite server. But now it comes down to this map 4, which, as we mentioned at the top of the cast, isn't as deadly as it used to be in the game but can still be a pretty big difference maker depending on this tank indeed i mean that that's a great result for uh, rehab on the way server they i think they should be pleased with that considering how everything unfolded um one thing we should mention as well i don't know if it was mentioned at the beginning or i can't remember but um both teams have opted to play the finale in this contest it should be said okay i actually agree with that because I mean, come to think of it, who really wants map 4 of Hard Rain to be the deciding factor? Whether it's a neutral game or a home away server. Exactly, and if that's the case, we've already seen that 1k per map chapter going in by Envy so far. If they can make the finale, like, they could 
break easily break 5k i would say and maybe like 5.5 depending on how that goes but you're also then giving team rehab a full five maps on their home server let's see if they can bring this delta closer for them as we go live it's going to be a dusty tank here at 38 percent so it is going to be the classic first set of houses tank going in what a skeet though by kane to start this off jockey as well going in pretty much one by one looks like they might be trying to guarantee a quad or something like that but only three damage on the board from this first hit so far and they're going in one by one, trying to lay them. Uh, Kane just takes a... Uh, sorry, that was Prova's Nick, sorry. Uh, taking a proxy boom to the face. Um, they already have a smoker up. Uh, Dungeon, aka okay, Spongy's got himself a charge. So, and uh, a Hunter's up too, so they could get themselves a proc out there. But they're going in already! Because that's the tank is early, that's why. Exactly, and I think that was the right idea. But this hunter is really trying to get them to shoot that alarm car, which is not going to happen, thankfully, for Team NB. Charger does go in, gets a punch, but not actually managing to land. And Dusty is bringing in all the hittables I think he possibly can. This one might be a little tough for him to get out of that spot. But let's see if he's able to do that. Gonna have to jump up and maybe punch it on the other side. But physics are not working on his side with that car, and that looks like it's gonna be even tougher to get out. Jump it, and yeah, it's gone. It's gone. That's going to be one card not able to be brought in. There's the Boomer dying as well, and Dusty is just kind of knocking these hittables around now in the front. Dragon, what do you think the right strategy for this is? He needs to position his hittables in a way where they're options. Not necessarily things you have to punt every single one of them where you nearly. But try and commit one of them, and then try and keep another car on the street, I'd say, just in case the SI support can make something work. That's a greatly struck hittable. Mini game Rochelle. Um, yeah. He is keeping one car on the street. I think that's a great idea. Now he's trying to commit, but he's taking quite a lot of chip already. I don't really think the cars are an option for him now. He's got to try and hope the support can do something for him. There's a double count landing. Smoker and, Hunt, Smoker and Hunter landing. Smoker pulling again. The car's right there, though, but Dusty doesn't have enough HP to do it. And he gets destroyed. No in caps for NV there, Rails. Oh, that is a four-punch tank going out. I mean, he did what he possibly could, I think, with how the survivors got zoned, but Envy did a great job of circling around that truck there and staying completely away from the hittable. So that is something where I think that tank, honestly, is one of the best chances for an away team to get some damage. And, you know, they get some with the help of the support there, but this map is going to be short work for them as they work their way forward. Boom responds on the side, gets immediately popped. Kane is going to get charged spit there, but the spit really didn't do any damage to him to write home about, but Kimchi oh. is going to be jumping through a bit of invisible spit on the back of that van. So that's all they really had to deal with. And Dragon, honestly, if they push the roof right now, it's like maybe one more hit, or even if they push inside, like, they know that there's probably not going to be another charge spitter on this hit at all. It's going to be a charge boomer, smoker, and hunter instead. So it's more of a separation hit than it is an inside hit. And if they clear this successfully, they're going to be in the safe room. Indeed, and I think that's exactly what they're hoping for. They're hoping that the hit's time just right so that when they can clear it successfully, it, the home straight is completely open to them. Um, it is a charge of Boomer, Smoker, and Hunter, so it's a, it's a free one. There's still quite some potential here for separation. Um, and I think Nick was contemplating going on the roof as well, just to make sure nothing comes from the roof when it wants to, but... Yeah, now they're playing very gingerly. You can see the spawn timer up above, counting down. Um, yeah, they're just being very cautious now. Just playing at their own tempo, just just sort of modulating it when they feel it's necessary to do so. Here comes the attack. Lands. They just drop down before they get caught up top. And the charger completely missed, could not do anything. Oka pulls back Rochelle for a brief second, but there it is. That's a hit gun rails, and now they've got that home straight open to them. Flyby was inches away from being pounced up top, but because he jumped out the window, the pounce landed onto him as he was falling, and that is how NV are going to work their way into the safe room. 4,212 points for them so far on their home server. They are keeping exact pace almost with that 1,000 points per chapter on their survivor side, and now this tank is so crucial for both sides. If this is a wipe being pushed out by NV, that would be utterly huge. But this is also a tank that can go either way so fast for the survivors or SI despite the ping. It can come down to one 
hittable being hit. If this tank is able to do work for Envy, they could be put in a beautiful position moving into that finale. Right now, as it stands, they're up by 2,700 points, just about. And if they can get any kind of damage on this or a kill or something and then stop team rehab from making it to the safe room it would be an utterly stupendous position for them in these grand finals first hits going in single boom okay. is going to go out there and the hunter is going to land onto a boom survivor as well plus that jockey went in it's a proxy and that's a huge it's amount of damage soul. on the soul oh poor soul he was just stuck in that spit um just Coleman just keeping him locked in i think um nor sure I agree with Rehab just being so hasty with that uh, e exit from safe from there. But they're going to have to deal with that loss in health bonus anyway. Tank is now up in the hands of Kane. And uh, let's see what he actually does with his hitables. Spawning a good deal away from the survivors. Knocking that car into play. He's going to have that in another couple hits. Smoker and Charger both going in along with that Jockey, not really getting much of anything on that hit. This Jockey is still alive, getting a scratch onto Thanatos, but that's about it. But now, that is one more car than we saw on the last half. As you mentioned, Dragon, it's going to be about how well he positions these. And this one actually really isn't working for him, and is going to go flipping out of play almost, and then comes back into play from the Tank Punch. I think if a Boomer lands here, that would be utterly huge for Team Envy. If it was me playing the tank and the boomer landed, i just send it straight in. i put one hitable, i tried one hitable, oh that one! Ricocheted almost and got, caught the survivors off guard, that nearly did. He's lost one car because of it. Um, that was wild, because that was almost something that bounced across the roof on that. This smoker down below now, though, is pretty much everything. He's on 25% as well, in the fog, trying to keep hitting his cars around. But he has to be so careful with these. That one flying onto the roof, that one flying in as well. This is going to be the survivors kind of split, though. In the back, that hunter and charger are looking for this up top. But the tank is trying to capture Rochelle. But this is great for Team Rehab so far, as Kane is pretty much caught out, getting a punch now though on to Dusty another punch landing trying to throw a rock but he is going to be dead that is a better take by team rehab than we saw on Envy's survivor side oh I think Kane made a fatal error there he committed a little bit too much to his hittables and he chose when he realized the hittables weren't working he just chose a really poor entry I think he should have tried to work his way up to the top roof and try and get the higher ground when he realized the hittables weren't going but he just kept on persisting and by then he just lost so much health. Exactly, and now this next hit is looking to find its way in, but I think the momentum has definitely shifted a bit now into Rehab's favor, since they are still looking to make the safe room. Boomer spawns up in the back, is going to get shut down, and this spitter is deciding to save now for some kind of indoor hit. That's the best chance that Team NB are going to have to get any kind of damage, I would say, on this entire map, except for the tank. It's going to be a hunter, spitter, charger, and one other spawn, but I think the survivors are wise to the fact that they can maybe push through this before the hit is up. And that be careful! Charger's trying to go in up top not quite finding it though hunter does get skeeted charger gets cleared instantaneously and this is the team rehab that i think we are used to seeing despite their high ping that they're playing with they're gonna be pushing into the safe room dragon tremendously well played by rehab that's exactly the type of round they needed to get a leg up in this away server game i honestly think kane very generously gifted them that bonus it has to be said I'm not sure why he persisted so hard with those those hittables and then chose to stay on the ground whilst going in. But, I mean, what's done is done, and, well, very well done to rehab. Exactly. They actually beat Team Envy's bonus on that map by 40 points. That is the number one seed of the tournament, showing exactly why they're here. It is something that maybe Team NB can replicate on the other server, but they need to really maximize this finale now to get that delta back to where it just was going into that map because 1612 points is not the kind of buffer that you want against team rehab on their home server i'll say that much at least we can signal the boat with the yeah i mean like i said i mean that was such a great result that 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 particular map four score could come back to haunt nv um in their away game but this is the reason why i think they should also play finale because they got an extra opportunity here to increase that buffer furthermore and this tank in particular on this map could go either way. I mean, if it does enough damage even without the wipe, it could be enough to ensure a wipe or zero bonus come the end of the finale, should they actually, should either side reach the boat.
Exactly. Honestly, I think the best case scenario for NV, when they're on their infected half here, they really, I think, want that tank to come up in the hands of either Kimji or Flyby, I will say. It's going to be a dusty tank, though, for Team Rehab, as we are live here now with the first half of the Hard Rain finale in these Grand Finals. That Hunter's going to be looking to find its way in, though. Already chipped down to 150 HP. Jockey is trying to get something as well from this trailer. Spitter's pre-spawn, and the Boomer is looking for something on top of the awning here. Jockey's going to get M2'd and shut down, though as the survivors are going to try to push their way out and get the skeet onto this hunter. That's going to be Nick pushing his way out, fat managing, to, managing to land it in about three shots, and a single boom goes out, meaning that we are going to probably see a quad here, or at least something close to it, as the survivors push their way to the gas station. Yeah, they, uh, the SI have got smoke awaiting. Um, I wonder if they're going to try something just before the event starts, or after... Oh, they triggered alarm car, but... I think Kimchi's doing that anyway because they know the event's about to start and extra horse not really gonna matter. Exactly, and as they reach the burger tank tank roof here, it is going to be that quad. Hunter, Charger, Smoker, and Jockey for this hit. It's gonna be pretty perilous for the survivors as they also have those common trickling in. But really there's not a huge amount of horde right now to start this off. I think that's beneficial for the survivors, because I think the SI are waiting for more common to come in before they actually hit. Now I hear them actually spawning at the dock almost and climbing their way up in the back. So that's going to be pretty easy, I think, for these Uzis to deal with. And Dragon, the hit's now going to go in as this Hunter is looking for something. That's going to be a tongue getting cleared. Hunter getting cleared as well. Charger is down below. Smoker pull does land onto Coach, and the Charger looks to intercept on that, but he is not able to take that target whatsoever. And that was a pretty decent wait time, I would say, at the start of this event. Very expertly handled in the shutdown of that attack by MV. I mean, I can... I can gonna test so it being pretty hard to land charges on a higher ping that much is sure even though it looked like a close charge close range charge was missed there but um yeah i mean that jockey i think it was either the hunter or jockey landed and one of them got shut down at the exact same time so it could have worked out but mv just timed the shutdown to just right when they needed to and there's another attack and completely annihilated there as his tank spawns up in the hands of dust Indeed it has, and he's crouched behind that gas station right now, knowing that if he tries to move, the survivors are going to absolutely needle him with those distance Uzis, and it looks as though the survivors are trying to find out exactly where he is. He is crouched in a corner, <laughs> and now I think they've found him. Ellis is really looking for any kind of chip he can possibly get, but there's the car being hit over the truck there as Dusty works his way to the right-hand side. Boomer, Smoker, and Charger for this hit. Rock is going to go in, not quite landing. Smoker pull does go out. Charger is going to whiff and fall through the hole in the burger tank roof, and he's actually looking to transition over to the right-hand side here, Dragon. He's very close to his oh. first pass being gone. Boomer got popped as well, and yes, I mean, Dusty looks as though he is going to be going to second pass, and he does so, yes. So he hasn't got many options now. I mean, he could try throwing a rocket too if he wants, but the survivors know where he is. They can hear his exact location, and he's just getting minimally chipped by these Uzis, but they're the better ones from distance. And one of the survivors has dropped down. Uh, Nick cannot get back up the ladder. As Tank is coming in, Dusty's going to try and use his car to his best of his abilities, uh, but it go deflects off. He's going to have to go in for punches. There's uh, one spawn short, there's Hunter and Jockey. Oh! Got killed, a double punch going off by Dusty there. And he gets one cornered. Hunter lands up top on Ellis. They need to clear that, and they do so. And another corner punch onto Ellis, and Nick is somehow on the other side of the fence. And Dusty does get an in cap onto Coach. But the rest of the bonus that NV are carrying on those survivor's rails. Really interesting move there by Prove because he did separate himself by staying down below, but I think what they were doing there is they just absolutely needed no boomer to land. They figured, okay, tank with a three cap, so long as we don't get hittable, we can do something with this. And they do manage to take just one in cap on that, so really, it would have been interesting to see what would happen had the tank committed onto Nick instead, but they managed to get a nice multi punch and then that in cap. Smoker is going to get its tongue cut. Boomer dies. Smoker dies. Charger's looking for anything down below, but is not going to get it. Kimchi playing pretty aggressively on that survivor side in a way that now might be taking Team NV's total score 
if they can keep this bonus over that 5k mark for their home server and that's going to come down to their hits on a rehab that are going to be standing in the same spots instead of being forced to run with their higher ping and it's going to come down primarily to that tank let's see if team rehab are able to get any more damage on this server it's going to be a boomer hunter jockey and a smoker so separation hit here but the boomer actually is just going to die Indeed, I think they're just sucking the boomer. I wonder if they're trying to work their way towards a quad cap. Um, just checking the distance of the uh, campaign. It's, it's usually 600, isn't it? Uh, here comes the boat, actually. So this is going to be the last attack. It's usually 600, but in this version of the zone mod, it is nerfed down to 400 in a pretty similar way to what we saw on that floor, honestly. So this quad cap is going to be everything for Team Rehab. Charger Hunter, Jockey, and Smoker up in the queue all standing in the back they know it's going to be the transition from the roof to the boat that gives them the best chance of landing this despite that higher ping and the survivors i think are going to take this as calmly as they possibly need to shooting those common in the front and making sure that none of them are going to be in the back for when they cycle out here another wave of board is now going to spawn but once again survivors taking their sweet time on this hit because they know any death charge, any quad cap, any multi cap here on their bonus would prove catastrophic onto their chances of winning this game. They need to make it with the bonus that they have right now, and that's why you see them still running around the roof, shooting in the common as much as they have to, with no baiting timer really to contend with. And now they are going to be working their way in. If you notice, the charger is spawning on the boat, trying to go for Nick, not going to land though. There is the triple cap though, going out with that smoker hunter and jockey landing in the back. Kimchi only getting cleared right now. That was so close to a wipe, but Prove was able to kill the Charger and get his team onto that boat. They are going to bring their total score for their home server over that 5k mark. One of the best survivor performances I think we've seen in this tournament. 5,156 points on these five maps of Hard Rain. Dragon, it comes down to this second half of the finale and then what Team Envy can do on Survivor side, I think, on the next server. Indeed. And you know what, I gotta say to Rehab, they are, uh, you know, they get to play their finale half and they are only, what, 2,500 points behind. If they can make the boat, even with just a little bit of bonus, that sets them up very nicely for the home server. Indeed it does. Like, even if they take multiple in-caps on that tank, the distance points are really going to help them. They've already scored 2,600 points on this away server. Let's see what happens next. Boomer, Hunter, Spitter, and Jockey, we are live with the second half of this finale. First game in the Grand Finals. Let's see what Rehab can do. It's going to be a Kane tank once again for NV, so he's looking to probably get a little bit of a better showing than we saw on the last map, which is, of course, possible here with a bunch of different strategies for the SI to use. Rehab taking their time and knowing that Jockey and Hunter are the two things they're going to have to shut down first. Yeah, I think uh, definitely Rehab are now just being a tad more cautious than they were in the previous round. Uh, Jockey is looking to try and get something onto Nick, but can't. Hunter gets stopped at the door. Spitter goes for a delay. Boomer trying to waddle away onto Nick's head and gets a proxy boom. So a slight delay there for Rehab, um, but nothing significant going on. Exactly, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Rehab just immediately shoot that alarm car and get to their positions on the roof, and indeed they're going to do just that. But this should be a quad cap attempt for Team Envy with that green ping. Jockey, Charger, Smoker so far, and there is a good amount of Horde now approaching the survivors from all directions. Let's see if they make this quad cap count. One survivor's in the porta potties there, jumping up and down. They're all gonna be inside the porta potties, <laughs> jumping up and down. Oh my goodness! Charger gets a punch. Charger gets another punch, and he's just beating the absolute shit out of rehab in that porta potty. Oh, I, you know, I wasn't didn't want to interrupt you at the time, but I could tell that was gonna unfold so badly in a way they probably didn't predict. I just realized if the charger just knew to scrap, you know, pound them with a fist. I could really, really add up, and so it has. They got a stumble on that as well. I mean, that's no quad cap, but look at how much damage <laughs> was done by that charger. Oh my goodness gracious. That jockey's landing up top onto Ellis. Hunter looking for another pin down below. That's the first time I think I've actually casted a hit going into that porta potty. I'll say that. Has a charger ever pounded so much with his fist? For so many. Reloading. I don't think I've seen that at all in a match. 
No, that was, I mean, the thing about it is they did not want to eat the quad cap. That much I can understand, but this tank now in the hands of Kane for Envy has a great chance of doing a lot of damage, and he spawns in the corner by the gas station in the exact same spot that Dusty did, getting chipped a little bit already on this trailer, but now smartly standing on top of the wheels in the back and jumping. Not going to take a whole lot of damage, I don't think, from that. He's going to want to transition out of this spot. It's going to be a boomer charger and smoker going in. That car oh. is flying up towards the survivors not gonna land but there is a triple boom going out rock going in and not gonna land charger getting even more punches oh my goodness this is this is really really beneficial i'd say for nv so far as kane this is going to take a sweet time jump around in the back and still keeping some sight is he on to these survivors as the fog now is going to los him a bit he's not able to keep the same kind of sight he could on map one he might actually have to commit with this next set of what is up with this car is this just me saying this, or can you see a levitating <laughs> car? <laughs> no, that is a levitating car. I don't know why that's a thing, 100%, but um, a competitive Left 4 Dead 2 this is, and that is something that just kind of happens. He's hit that car out of play. The other car is just suspended in midair, knocking off the burger tank sign. There's going to be almost a hittable landing onto Coach, but he's not going to be able to get it. He is going to get it down. It would seem onto the survivor, but Brian was actually able to take his pills as the tank now is going to in-cap him. Hunter's also going in to help out. There's a pin going out. Punch is going to whiff right there. Now he's pushing Rochelle back into the hittable, which Dusty did not see. That is another down going out. Kane doing a nice amount of work on that tank. He did, yeah. Again, I think he was a little bit too persistent with the hitables when he didn't need to be at certain points, but he did eventually get one on the Rochelle. Um, if he just pressed in a bit more with the punches, I think he could have got even more damage out of that tank, I think, but nevertheless, still great damage spread onto the survivor's rails. Exactly, and I think right now what Rehab are hoping for is just to make the map. They still have 196 bonus, 11% HP, 43% on DB, so if anybody gets hit on these next few attacks, it's gonna knock them down to almost nothing, I would say. Jockey Charger, Hunter Smoker, another quad cap attempt, coming in, no Porta Potty this time. Jockey lands down below, Charger gets cleared, there is a Smoker pull going out, and the Jockey does manage to in-cap, Wrist Burner at the same time, Dave being absolutely pulled for a good amount of damage from that Smoker, and now they have a pickup to contend with. This is still a couple more hits I think they're going to have to endure from NV before getting that distance points on those uh, on, on the finish. But honestly, they still could die here. Oh, and Dusty's paused the game. Um, yeah, I think it's only Coach really, yeah, Dungeon Spongy who has any bit of bonus left. Um, and I think Brian surely has to commit his pills at some point. Proxy Boom going on to Nick. Spitz just uh, spitting. I'm probably just Guessing they're sucking their spawns trying to get a quad cap. Reloading. Mm, yeah, and I think they're gonna have because of that boomer, I think they might get one more wave of horde if they're lucky, but the real danger is gonna be the same thing as it was for NV. Getting onto this boat can be extremely perilous, and it's even more perilous against a quad cap with lower ping. The Charger made a great spawn, I'll say, on the last half behind that boat, but then the triple cap was able to land without the charger also being able to get that quad so i don't know if the charge is going to do the exact same thing here but it looks as though they're going to be setting up from the sides and might be hitting rehab when they try to get to the boat instead of when they're getting onto the boat so it's a real small difference but i think it matters because the survivors are still going to be killing common and then dropping into this with everybody bleeding dave is already going to be slow so is dungeon and dusty is almost there as well with the bleed going out and indeed this is going to be the spawn coming out from team envy there goes the triple cap and there's the quad oh my goodness team envy making a statement on their home server but one survivor actually did get cleared as the jockey is m2ing him that is almost the quad landing but the charger does get the death and there it is dragon oh, wow i mean they really need to land the quad cap in a sense but just to trim off those few points more for rehab that might still prove crucial in the end and going it onto the away server the gap is or oh, what is it, 2,188, I believe? I buy that, yeah, that seems, that seems close. So That's... essentially, 2,200 point gap. They've got to, like, make up a, a positive deficit of, like, 2,200 points of rehab to get this win and this tournament. Exactly, and this will be for 
all the marbles, obviously, on the next server, but you also have to think, okay, Rehab were able to survive a couple tanks right on the away server that way, and that is something for them that, you know, they, because they're so used to playing with the latency, I think they can do it, but now it's going to be how to Envy work with that uh, higher ping onto the EU server, because I'll say this much, in every game that I think I've seen in terms of home and away for Team Rehab, it's obvious that their strength is 100% on that EU server. I don't think I've seen another team like them with the ability that they have to score points on that. It's really going to be dependent on Envy, you know, getting the distance points, if nothing else, that they need. But I'd say the tank on map 1 and the tank on map 3 are very, very survivable, as is the one on map 4. But they're going to need to play really really precise and cautious survivor to make sure that nothing like completely catastrophic happens to them because with one or two wipes on a tank on rehab's home they can easily take control of this game absolutely but another thing that i didn't really think of until just now is the fact that even though we are playing five chapters all five chapters of hard rain three of those chapters are only worth 400 distance and a max of 800 bonus so there aren't that many available points as there usually would be on other campaigns, regardless of the fact that there is a finale being played. So that's something that Rehab do need to consider. And I think they've really, the way they can make the most of it is that they really maximize their uh, bonus scores on maps two and three in particular. I think map two again is gonna be the key one. Indeed, it most likely will. We are just getting onto the EU server right now. So let me send this info to both of you. All right, there we go. So we are on that second server now. Both these teams probably going to want to play this game as soon as possible. Looking, of course, nice for Team Rehab here. Dusty getting just about 90 ping. Dungeon and Thanatos in the 20s, and Wristburner has 5. So this is going to be a pretty equal matchup, I would say. Kane joining right now, he's going to have like 180-something, if not a bit more, once the full load of the server is seen here in just a couple minutes. And this first tank, again, hittables are definitely the friend of the special infected here, but we didn't really see anybody eat a hittable last game that was of any consequence on this first map. It got an in cap nicely out, but this could still be another spot where if this tank is able to work those correctly, either team could die, and Envy are going to be starting on survivor side here first, it does seem. So I'm just making my way into the server now. Um, but yeah, I like I said, I mean, obviously, wherever they can make points up, the better. But um, uh, for Envy in particular, I think this is a case where they need to, they obviously need to match what Rehab did in terms of points and just making safe room with bonus on a couple of maps. Um, but then again, like map four in that previous server game could have come back to haunt Envy still. I mean, that was a lot of bonus to give away on map four on your own home server. Um, I wonder if that's really sort of the crux of like this whole contest. Um, let's let's see what happens. I mean, who knows? Envy could surprise us. They could like shut down SI hits almost as effectively as they did on their home server and score lots of points. But uh, yeah, you got to go on previous like form, and that would suggest that Rehab are absolutely monstrous on their home server in terms of scoring points and getting results. Indeed, they are, and Envy right now are working with all of them in the 230 to 250 ping range lowest being proved but it's really not a huge difference between the people on that team this is going to test team envy's survivor positioning i would say more than anything especially with the speed that team rehab have on their home server with their special infected their coordination is 100 percent on point most of the time here and you know having an early tank like this really really i mean if team envy survive it and they manage to make the map i think that would be good for them because then you know, Rehab might be putting up somewhere in the vicinity of like 900 to 1100 points on this map, just map one alone. So neither team can really afford to have anything happen in terms of a wipe, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a complete shutdown on Rehab survivor side especially. So let's see what Team Envy are able to do with this on this server. And I think they're actually just going to be quickly spectating out to maybe switch the people who have the guns. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Okay. Now, are they... Are they already accounting for the scores here in the sense are they adding to the previous uh, round scores to this score line in this server or are they 
just gonna add them up afterwards. Personally, I usually leave that as an admin, right? I leave the decision to the teams that way, because some teams don't like to have the scores set, because then it's like, okay, you know, what is momentum in the game? Since on last server, it was obviously the home team that's going to have the momentum, but if you put an away team with like a 2200 point differential, they're probably going to be going Survivor first for at least the first three rounds, which if you're getting, you know, I think they actually are about to set scores, did they? No, 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 no. They were limiting slots instead. Okay. So... Hmm. I personally, uh, I, I don't like it just for the fact that it's like, okay, in the flow of the game, right, usually it should be the home team that's able to go eventually Survivor first and then play Infected, but if you're playing on a way server where you're forced to go Survivor first every round just because of what happened on the last server, the flow of the game is a lot different in my opinion. Indeed. Now remember, the deficit here for Rehab to make up is 2188 points, essentially 220. They can essentially get that by averaging roughly around just under 450 points per chapter in terms of positive advantage over um, NV. If they can do that, if they can keep that sort of average gap per chapter, then they can come back, they can do this, and they can pull off the win, um, which is very, very feasible. I mean, with their home advantage, plus how they usually play, even against a team like NV, I mean, that's, that's definitely possible, Rails. I'd already, I, I would say that that is definitely possible. And I don't know, because Envy on their survivor side here, the kryptonite for any away team with this kind of ping is booms. If they get boomed during this tank, you know, I've seen some teams really be able to shut down on a neutral server because you can just force the common to come in from one or two areas and annihilate it with the Uzis. But this is going to be something where they are going to take probably as much time as they possibly can with those baiting timers. Because all the way back in the day, right, in the RBT1 era, like, that was what they were known for. Like, really, really hardcore survivor pacing that would cause them to bait a choke, sometimes for as much as a couple minutes, right? Or at least it felt that way if you ever played against them. And in this scenario, they need to be, I, I would say, very, very cautious on Survivor side because there are some teams that play with the higher ping and they just really don't change anything about what they do. They still play it as fast as they did with low ping. But I like the decision by both squads not to set the scores here, and I think that's going to allow Envy, if they fall behind on this chapter, I think their strength has to be their special infected on this, and of course their tanks. So I, I think that's going to be what allows them to win if they're able to hold on with that 2.2k advantage. We'll see what they're able to do, however, because we are now going live with the second of two games for the RBT5 Grand Finals. Envy on Survivor side first, defending a 2,188 point lead from the other game. Dusty is going to get this first tank for Team Rehab, and we're going to see what they're able to do on this first hit. Smoker spawns in front, not finding anything. That Hunter gets annihilated as well in the back as the Smoker does die. So zeros across the board. Once again for Team Envy, it's Flyby, Prove, Kane, and Kimchi. And who do we have for Team Rehab again, Dragon? For Team Rehab, we have Dave, aka Soul, Wristburner, aka Brian, Dungeon, aka Spongy, and Dusty himself, who is now the tank. Indeed he is. This car is going in, Ooh. in, and in, trying to land almost onto Coach. That Boomer was trying to get a boom from the alarm car, finding nothing there, however. And now, the survivors are going to be starting on this roof with a couple of Susie's, I believe, and one distant Susie. They are trying to kill everything they possibly can. Chargers get swapped. Jockey lands onto Nick in the back, but then it does get instantaneously cleared. Rock gets skeeted by Kimchi. Charger also goes down. Dusty trying the best that he can to keep sight from far in front of them, but he's going to have to be careful here since it doesn't seem like he actually has it until right about now. So the survivors are trying to push him a little bit to get a bit of chip as he now is going to back up. But Dragon, he's going to have another set of spawns and then he might have to roll in. I think he has to, yeah, for certain. I mean, he's got options over the cars. The car alarm, by the way, had already been deactivated when his first car hit gently nudged the, uh, the parked car. Um, but he just needs to create options for himself. And he, let's not forget, Sorry, actually, no, do forget what I was about to say. I was about to say that the high ping advantage, but this is the EU server, so they don't have the high ping. You can't use the long arms here. That's NV's uh, role now. Boomer um, is dead. Yeah. That is really important, I would say, because as we mentioned, high ping plus booms, not fun whatsoever. This car is going to go flying in, not quite managing to land. Survivors might want to be looking to get back on top of the roof here. Ellis is trying not to jump into the rocking hittable as that car goes flying up, oh. not going to find Rochelle. That car is out. He is going to be looking to get a punch onto Nick to start. There's a separation pull. 
Indeed she is. It looks as though Kimchi is going to have to... He actually gets intercepted by that jockey. Tank is going to be hitting a car close to Rochelle, but there's the clear. There's the pounce. And the car goes flying over Rochelle's head. That is not going to be God frames, however. Only the smoker now left. He's going for the kill on to prove, but he's getting railed by these Uzis so much, and he does not oh, get so the close. kill. Oh my goodness. That smoker does get a pull. They need to get this pick up right now and before any of the other spawns come in, but that's a one down tank going out and almost a kill, but it wasn't quite, Dragon. That, was, that could have gone either way. That was like a teetering seesaw if I ever saw one in terms of the, the dynamic between both teams. Uh, that looked like it would have gone all so horribly wrong for NV, but oh, Dusty just could not get that kill that one crucial kill which could have swung everything Within. back in their favor again I mean, like i said seesaw both ways all the time but nv exactly. somehow made it out of just one in gap and now the hits going in with a jockey going in first getting destroyed charger going for a, a charge over the pickup truck did not work out for him spit tries to delay but it doesn't really delay anything there and coach got to take a spit damage somehow from that yeah, the death spit, I think, was rising up a bit, but this is really solid now for Envy as they're working their way forward. Looks as though they are a little split right now, though, trying to find a set of pills inside, and here comes the quad attempt, I believe, from Team Rehab. No, it's actually not a quad. They got another boomer, so it's Hunter, Boomer, Jockey, and Smoker. Decidedly less deadly than having that charger, but still, three cap potential is the name of the game. Jockey goes in onto Rochelle in the back, is going to get cleared. The Hunter lands in front for a bit of damage, and there's another pull going out into the back but all the clears coming in pretty short order and now envy are going to have their foot on the gas trying to get through this next choke i would say they got triple boomed but the horde is pretty well shut down this is scary dragon oh, it is it really is quite frightening actually um 534 bonus envy are on course to better their chapter one score from their home server charger does land though and a spear is going to go on michelle but she is on temple duty coach does get jockeyed into the spit and that is significant damage oh yes it is that 2-2 two -two was maximized right there in a great way by team rehab kane being coach is going to be a little bit hoarded here popping pills though and going forward they have one more hit left to take. We saw a question mark for some reason come out in all chat. I'm, oh, Rochelle got a double get up from the charger. Okay, yeah, that is something that we've been seeing happen, I'd say more recently in both versions of zone mod. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but it's gonna be a smoker, charger, hunter, jockey, quad cap. Ooh, Envy are trying to push it. They're gonna be hit by these SI on the backside. Hunter's going in, smoker gets cleared. Jockey is going to get shut down. The hunter got a bit of damage onto flyby, but there is the map being made on the away server with bonus for NV not going down quietly whatsoever 708 points for their first map total and as we mentioned before dragon the strongest part of any team's play on high ping is the tank play and they have a chance if they're at match to get any kind of wipe or even comparable damage that could be one map immediately out of the way for rehab's comeback chances indeed and uh uh, I mean, you're never really entirely sure if survivors will make the save from or not on um, on the away server with such a high stakes game as this. But Envy have done just that. They are still setting the bar high despite the things. Like they are proceeding as they have started, and now the first hit is up for Rehab to defend against. They got to defend against a Smoker, Boomer, Hunter, and a Spitzer with flyby. They have attacked double boom at the front. They decide to go back. Hunter does land very briefly onto Nick Spit too. Coach is just being uh, strangled by the smoker's tongue there, does get cleared pretty quickly. Um, very minimal chip on all survivors going out, but uh, it's a flyby tag rails. Indeed it is, and that's actually what I was just looking for as the survivors make their way forward. I've seen flyby play in a number of international competitions, including back in, I think it was the EQ Cup number three grand finals or something like that, Dragon. I think we were both there for that as well. His ability to make this work as tank is really going to come down to these cards. That's a beautiful hit going into that space, but now the survivors might decide to play him a little bit more aggressively. We shall see, though, as now he is rotating to the left-hand side. Boomer is going to die, and I think a tri-cap here, Dragon, might be exactly what they need. I mean, if a boom could land, great. But I mean, a tri cap can also work effectively here too. Um, the key thing was that they sat the boomer when flyby was still like 100% on first pass. That's what didn't happen for Dusty's tank in the previous half. So they have given themselves more time to set up this hit exactly how flyby wants it. And now it looks like he's starting to commit. He's starting to make a push. 
He's going to try and get that hitter ball a bit further into play. Um, just bouncing get the fence to set up better for a hit. There is a single boom. Oh my god! That car... Oh my goodness, that car almost cleaved Rochelle across the top of her head. That was wild to witness. But now the survivors are getting pushy onto this tank. He's down to 5,000 HP. The boom has been cleared, and it's going to be down to this next set of spawns. And this car finding its way in. Flyby going to try to potentially push the top of the smoker pole going out onto Nick, which gets immediately cleared. Dropping down, trying to find the punch, finding it now. Smoker pole goes out as well, but he misses the punch onto Rochelle, getting juked by Dave. That's a punch going out but very minimal damage. That first car hit that he sent in was almost a single or double in cap, but instead it turns out to be only two punches. Yeah, I think uh, I think they, MV must be scratching their heads a little bit and wondering how they didn't get more damage from that. Um, I think uh, Flyby did what he could to set up the hitables, but um, when he just started going for punches and rehab, just positioned himself so well. They punished uh, MV's tiny lack of coordination and timing on the SI support, Reloaded. which is able to completely annihilate Flyby's tank there, so well done to them. Indeed it was. Now they have another hit in the queue. Spitter, Smoker, Hunter, and Boomer, so this 2-2. Two, two. Boomer is on top of the broken house, looking for an arc, going to find it onto one, and that Hunter is not finding anything quite yet. That's going to be the Smoker trying to get a pull as well on to Risk Burner, but nothing going there, and I don't think they're due for a quad now, so this could be Team Rehab making quick work of the rest of this map. They probably only have two more hits to deal with, one being in the first house here and the other probably off the top of the safe room. Envy are going to try to make the most that they possibly can of that. They've already done a good amount of damage mitigation since they actually made the safe room on the last half, but maybe one more good hit would put them in the company of only allowing Rehab to get like a couple hundred more points back on this map. It's a good hit for it as well. Charger, Spitter, Jockey, and Hunter for this house. They still have an alarm car there to be concerned about, but I don't think any of the SI are hoping or having any sort of contingency plans involving the alarm car. They're going to wait until the survivors are a bit further down this narrow alleyway here. Um, Rochelle is going up top on the roof. She's trying to block the spawns. Hunter comes in from the back. Are they all going to try and go on one survivor? No. It was the Charger and Jockey have the same idea. The Hunter punches someone in front. A few fists going on to Nick there onto Dusty. That was actually a fair amount of damage. Drop the bonus just under 100 more points. Right now, Rehab stand to make back 324 points on this first map, but there is one more hit for Team MD right at that safe room I think it's going to be. Smoker, Boomer, Hunter, and the other spawns of Spitter. So it is that 2-2. Not an amazing amount of damage that can get pushed out, but they might be trying just to stack onto one survivor. Boomer is going to get shut down. Hunter goes in. Nice double cap landing for a split second. That spit also goes down onto Dave. So again, probably the best they could have hoped for on that hit, but this is going to be Rehab taking the lead on their home server by a total score of 976 to 708. So just... 268 points made back on this first map. Still about a 1,900, over a 1,900 point lead for Team Envy. I think them making the map on Survivor side was really crucial, and I think it's going to be crucial on definitely map three, but next map is a lot of potential for damage as well, I'll say. Absolutely. Um, I wish I could comment on what's actually going on, but for some reason, uh, my computer all tabbed out automatically by itself, and I'm unable to get back into level 2, so I can't see, I'm going to have to restart the game, so uh, apologies for that. No worries, no worries, we're going to be seeing the teams probably ready up a little bit fast maybe, they've been doing so throughout this entire game so far, which we always love to see, but there is a little bit of a team swap that's needed here, just because Risk Burner is on the Special Infected versus being on Survivor, and Kane is on Survivor versus being on Infected, so they're going to sort that out as they set the tank spawn back to 58%. We saw Team Envy do absolute work with their hits prior to the tank on just Special Infected side, and this tank can be shut down pretty easily by teams that are on whatever ping because it's so far in the open field, but this is now something where if you're Envy, you know you still have a little bit of that advantage, but it's a completely different game at this point. Just try to win this one, try to keep it close. Let's see if they're able to do that now on Special Infected side as we have Rehab on Survivor. First hit is a Boomer Hunter Smoker, and a spitter, it's going to be Kane's tank for Envy as well when we get to that 58% uh, 58 mark. 
Same point in time here now, we've got the survivors looking to push out of the first building with that Hunter pre-spawn up top. Everything looks like it's actually going to be going from the roof here. We'll see if Envy wants to hit for that quad or if they're just going to try to get as much damage as possible here, if not a combination of both. Baiting timer is up as well for Rehab. Hunter is going to be crouching, dropping its way inside, getting a separation pounce actually onto Dungeon in the back. That is a fair amount of damage as this Boomer is also going to waddle in and die. Dragon, that was a decent first hit for sure from NB. I wish I could see it. Again, I think something's seriously wrong with my Steam. I might have to restart my computer. Um, so you'll have to bear with me a few minutes. Sorry no about worries. this. No worries, no worries. I will take it until you get back as well, just because I think we have someone else on the server who might be holding up the slot. But right now, we've got a Hunter, a Shredder, a Spitter, and a Jockey for ND. Going in with this hit, Hunter is not going to land quite yet, does get skeeted by Wrist Burner. The Spitter is going to go in for free spit and die last, but that was a nice shutdown from Team Rehab on their home server here. I'm looking exactly to see what they're going to pick up for guns with this probably a lot of Susie's I would say just so that they can actually no, they're gonna go 2-2 two, two instead that actually helps because they are gonna want to clear out as many of these common as they possibly can before jumping into the sugar mill next it's gonna be a charter smoker jockey and boomer boomer does get a single boom onto Rochelle the rest of the SI hit though is not going to be going in on that instead they are waiting at the top of these silos as rehab make their way inside Smoker might be deciding to reposition and go from outside, but the survivors might actually spawn this tank prior to the hit going in, and Kane's going to lose this jockey because he is going to become the tank. This is the hit going in, though. Jockey is going to manage to land. Charger goes in for punches, not going to get anything there on the actual charge, and we see an M2 of that wall kicking Hunter. The tank is now up into the hands of Kane, and he is staying pretty far away from the survivors, trying not to take that much chip. Let's see what he decides to do now on Special Infected side. They're probably going to be looking for a Boomer from this, and it's going to be a Boomer Jockey and a Charger. This is probably not the ideal hit. They're going to probably want to kill a Charger instead in this open area as the survivors work their way through this. The Boomer is going to get M2'd and shut down. Kane still on first pass with 5,965 health. I am back. I just need to reconnect to the <laughs> Indeed you do, and I think right now we have a server slot problem, but we will deal with that right at the conclusion of this tank. Jockey, Charger, and one other spawn is going to be the commit hit, it would seem, with that Smoker. So, okay, instead of sacking Charger, they sack Boomer. They have three pinners now that they can use. Smoker looks like it's going for some kind of early pull as Kane works his tank in. He's going to be on 45% with just about 5,877 HP. Jumping in down the ramp. Smoker pull is going to go out onto Coach, and that is not going to be cleared. There is the corner almost going out. It is going to be going out onto Coach. One more punch will get the end cap onto Dusty, but he whiffs that punch as the survivors are going to be pushing close to him. Turning back around, not really a whole lot else he can do aside from that one punch onto Brian, and that is going to be a dead tank, but not before about a down and a half goes out from Envy on Rehab. Thanks. No problem, coach. Ah, uh, damn it now. All right, as we try to serve, as we try to fix the server at the same point in time, just due to the fact that someone else joined, it's going to be Team Rehab on the survivor side pushing their way forward with that jockey spitter boomer hunter facing them on the side of NV. We'll see if we manage to actually get the server to work in a second the way that we want it to, but there's that jockey landing up top. Hunter going in, managing to land as well, and the spit will be not going down on top of that, instead going out on top of Nick. So, at this point, I mean, there are probably two really perilous hits still for Rehab to take, being on the staircase and also in the cane field, but I don't know if we're going to be seeing the right kind of hit that Envy would want for it. They might be getting something decent now, though. Charger, Smoker, and Jockey, plus that Hunter, so they have a quad for the staircase that they're going to be trying to send directly on top of Team Rehab's heads as they work their way up here. Let's see if they are able to get a decent amount of damage on this, at least. And I'm going to see exactly what goes on on this hit, as Dave is in the front trying to just get as much space as possible before the rest of this hit goes in. They're doing a great job baiting it, however. Hunter's going to get immediately annihilated from below. The Smoker dropped actually back down instead of trying to get a reset pull. Let's see if this Charger manages to land. Indeed, it does not. And that's going to be the quad up, down, and dealt with for Team Rehab. I 
unfortunately right now, with, in the middle of the round, I can't find the person who joined, unfortunately, to kick them. But that Smoker is going to go in, not getting much of anything. The Spit does go down for a bit of damage, and this is going to be Envy. Looks like they are sacking in the right order then to go into the field, potentially with a quad. And right now, I mean, with one survivor bleeding, that being Dusty, Dungeon's also going to be slow. So they're going to have to commit both these sets of pills to stay fast after they get down from the top level in this elevator. I would be surprised to see Team Envy send this now. I think they know they have the right spawns that they want for the field. And indeed, they're going to be dropping right down to do just that. Come on, into the elevator! I'm just saying game info. I think it's the guy who's called XCKKX. I'm guessing he's from Hong Kong. I am trying to see that as well, but now we actually opened up another slot, so if you join right now, you should be good. In the meantime, Charger's gonna get stumble damage from the second floor onto the survivors, a cheeky charge there from Kane, but they are gonna be saving it for the Kane field in this area. They have the spawns that they want. Charger looks like it wants to rock it from the top as the jockey's looking to spawn behind the elevator. Smoker spawns up with the hunter in front, starting just to bounce around to make noise as well as the jockey here. Let's see if they actually manage to land any part of this. It's a pretty perilous situation as I mentioned before, just because now we also have this hit going in from the back. There's the pounce landing. Charger lands as well, but the smoker did not quite have a recharge. That is a pound that does go out on to Nick really fast, but no real massive damage going on to that. And Dragon, have you rejoined? Finally back in the server, I'm seeing now that they are carrying about a 400 something bonus here as they make the save from. Indeed they are, and that's gonna be Team Rehab making it in with 1,948 points just to start this. Okay, so score-wise, in terms of their survivor performance, they're, they're almost matching the NV. They're only about 100 points shy of what NV did on their own server. But um, uh, how many points did uh, did uh, Rehab get on the Way server by the second chapter? Wasn't it somewhere around 700 points, I believe? Yeah, it's a very similar score, I'd say, for what we saw on the other server. The real challenge now, though, is Envy are going to have to probably kill this tank in the open field. They did a good job killing the one at the burger tank on map one, so it's definitely doable. But once again, their real danger is going to be the support, if it's able to land in any kind of fashion to help the tank. There is a wall kick, plus a spit, plus a smoker pull going on to prove. That looked like it was going to be a lot more damage, but instead, she was able to kite her way out of that, and then just M2 plus shotgun all of these commons as they swarm onto her. That's going to be the first attack dealt with by Envy as they push forward here. And Dragon, I mean, a multicap against players that are on red ping is 100% possible in that field, but the other thing is we've seen Envy not lose any of their positioning whatsoever, despite the fact they're on that higher ping. I've ever seen a team throughout the years of FA2, like, just convey absolute movement positioning in such orchestration like Envy. I mean, they've been doing it for years. They're still doing it now, even after having some time away from the game and just trying to reacclimatize themselves to each other in the game. And it's showing even higher things are still keeping it up. Let's see how we do it here. Double cap land. It's a triple cap. It was almost a quad cap landing. That smoker, I think, tried going for someone else. Oh my and goodness, that is so much damage. To grab. Yeah, but uh, wow, what a. That was so nearly a quad cap rails. It was, and that's the thing now with Team Rehab's strategy which is pretty much patented by them a couple other teams do it but nobody does it quite as well as they do in terms of how they sack for those quad caps they go for those all the time pretty much every other hit and that's the reason why even though it wasn't a quad they got a set of pills committed they landed a beautiful multi-cap this boomer's gonna go in from the back landing onto kimchi who was just a bit behind the spitter charger and jockey are looking to go next as that jockey works its way in. Charger going in as well. Missing the charge though. On to Ellis. But there's some free spit damage going out as the jockey lands. Pretty sloppy hit I would say. But it's one that gets the result that they wanted. A bit more chip damage going out. They do have one survivor now who's committed pills. And they have a hunter in the spawn queue. As the survivors are going to be looking to push their way forward. And as they spawn that tank. They're going to be also looking to send their way back. As that hunter lands with just the boomer and charger now in the spawn queue here they need to get out of this sugar mill but it looks as though kimchi was just a bit separated as that one boom goes out they shouldn't really be dealing with anything else too gratuitous as they work their way out here they can probably clear the common as well as dungeon has this tank dragon and is working his way close to them yeah i mean i've seen a couple of tanks from the previous 
around try and uh say the previous round i mean the previous server try and make work, uh, rock tanks sort of work here but it's a very very difficult angle to make rock tanks work if you are sending the hit in um he does try and throw a rock nonetheless but gets skis and uh oh ch sorry coach taking a couple of pounds from a charger there Indeed he did, and this tank now is going to be getting chipped a good amount there by Kimchi, aggressively going forward. This tank is now down to under 5k oh HP, goodness. and they are railing him with those Uzis. Yeah, if I was Kimchi though, I'd duck back outside if I was him and rejoin his team. He's done very well to score some extra chip there, but they can't afford to be taking any like major risks here. They need to preserve that bonus as best as they can. Here Indeed comes the tank, here it comes down the ramp. They have a Boomer, Hunter and Jockey for support. They're looking to land that Boomer. He's trying to get a spawn. Oh, and he does get a Boomer to coach. There's a Hunter on Nick. And they're going to try and... Yeah, they pop the Boomer eventually, but now they've got to destroy this tank, which they need to do so. Not before getting a hit onto Ellis at the end. That was so close to being almost no damage from that, just because they were managed to kite a couple of the tank's punches as he worked his way around. They are still moving and they are still looking to get those all important distance points on this map. This is going to be full W mode from Envy in a second as they work their way forward. Charger, Smoker, Spitter is a pretty strong hit, I'd say, for this spot, along with that Jockey. They have the ability to still bait some of this, but they do have almost everyone slow, except for Flyby and Prove, and Prove is in full bleed at this point. Smoker lands, but does get instantly cleared. There's the charge landing, along with that Jockey in the back, on to Kimchi, so a nice amount of damage going out onto Kane at the same point. But Dragon, each point that they get is a step closer to closing this gap on this server and helping them preserve that bonus they had from the last one. Right now, at the very least, they're still going to be up by just about 1,300 points going into the last three maps, but they have no plans on Survivor side, I'd say, of wiping out these chokes. No, they don't. I mean, the curious thing is they haven't suffered a single end cap, but they don't have any pills left either. And Kane is going to be 1 HP soon. Kimchi is probably one or two fists away from going down. And uh, Hunter goes out of someone. Ellis does get in capped at last. Um, yeah, this is a bit of a tricky situation for Envy. They've got to now endure an event. They've got to cross the cane field and hope that they're still in good enough condition to reach a safe room. I think that's a rather tentative position right now. It really is, and they have to take this horde pretty much flawlessly. It's in a precarious spot for them, only because Kane is now at 1 HP. If he goes down and then the rest of the hit's able to go in, that could be catastrophic. There's that pounce landing, though, onto Ellis. Kimchi taking a fair amount of damage from that, and there's a smoker pull as well, going out onto Flyby, only getting cleared right now at the end of that, and he's using his pistols, I believe, because his shotgun is not loaded for that. They might decide to down Kane before the next hit, but if he can actually make it into the elevator, they could down him there, and then he would be bleeding out just from the point that they hit the bottom. It's going to be real close, because it's going to be a spitter, charger, boomer, and one more spawn for wrist burner in just a couple of seconds. I think this is going to be a position where, you know, the guaranteed hit would be diving on these survivors who are already hurt in the cane field, but it's also a potential for a wipe here. Jockey's going to get shut down. Charger does land on to Kimchi, but gets instantaneously cleared by Kane. They're going to wait, I think, to down them until they're in the elevator, and yeah. then they're going to have to try to W their way as fast as possible across this field, but Dragon, everyone is slow. Absolutely, and this is why I was saying it's tentative. They've made the event, yes, but now they're in the cane field, where they get a quad boom. Um, I wonder if they're going to hit on that, actually. They might just realize they're all low on health. Why not just go in for scratches, delay them even further? Yeah, and Kimchi really can't afford to go down in the middle of that cane field, or else that would be catastrophic. I mean, the only way that doesn't become catastrophic is if he's able to down anybody, but there's the death going out on to Kimchi before that even starts. They just find a set of pills now in the hands of Kane. One of them is probably going to pop to avoid uh any kind of multiple in cap here yeah and kane's gonna do just that working his way through but you notice the distance point still ticking up up and up for envy on the second map they're doing everything they possibly can on survivor side yeah. these commons are becoming a Bearing nuisance split though. as well I mean, they I found can... another set of pills wow what in the cane field yes my goodness okay <laughs>
Boomer getting shut down too. There is still a bit of bonus on Flyby. This is not over yet. Charger Jockey and Hunter trying to make their way in, but it looks as though the survivors are just going to be keeping their positioning a little apart. Charger is going to land on to the one survivor outside, and there is the tri-cap with the Hunter and Jockey Dragon. They almost made that with bonus. Almost, yeah. I mean, it was not much bonus, but still a good result there to get from uh, Rehab, wiping them on a, on a crucial map for score, I would say. Um, having said that, though, the gap is still, on this server at least, what, 772 points. So, if I'm worth thinking it right in terms of average, I think NV still have the slight edge here, but... It's, it's so close that, like, depending on how things go on this next map, it, it could swing in Rehab's favor very easily. It really could. I mean, this map 3 is makeable by both sides, but this cane field is going to be absolutely perilous, specifically for NV, just because of the context around it. They've managed to do a good job on Survivor side so far, but this tank here is going to have to be a, a, a live for them. They, they cannot get wiped. If they live the tank, that's fine, but... Like, this is also an opportunity for Team Rehab to just get an astounding amount of bonus so long as they don't take a whole lot of damage in the actual cane field and then they're able to push out and zone that tank. Like, that's no-hitter territory if they play that 100% right. Let's see if they do as we go live. Boomer, Charger, Hunter, and Smoker for NV. I'd be surprised to see them hit at the start again, but maybe they will because there's the single boom going out. Charger's trying to go in. I like the fact they did that before. Now one survivor is going to be getting punched so much. Dusty getting absolutely worked by those charger punches. It works for them again, Dragon. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, that's clearly MV's philosophy with that first hit on Hard Rain Map 3. And did they actually do more damage than on their home server? I had a sneaky feeling they might have done. Although theirs was a tri-cap, wasn't it? Indeed it was. I mean, that Charger and Smoker did a great amount of damage there, specifically to Dusty. Spitter's trying to go in. Boomer also gets popped. Jockey bouncing around for its troubles as well, but I don't think Team Rehab are going to be too happy with that first start they just had, and they're going to probably look to take almost no damage from the next couple of hits. We'll see exactly what Envy gets for it. They have this Hunter, and they might be doing another Charger for this staircase, and if that's true, then... That is one of the hits that has the most damage potential for them. It's a Charger, Smoker, Spitter, and a Hunter. So if they're able to get any kind of separation onto Rehab or even that Charger landing, that would be great prior to this tank spawn. Uh, keep me for a bit. Indeed, yeah. So it's Charger, Smoker, Spitter, Hunter. They do... I mean, there's some great potential for damage here. Uh, it looks like Smoker wants to pull from below. Charger from up top. Um, Spitter's just waiting very patiently for his SR support to make a move. Hunter's pouncing below as well, of course. Survivors are going right down below. They're not taking any risks with uh, heights or anything like that. And it, the attack gets shut down very quickly. Charger missed. Hunter got destroyed. Spitter completely missed as well. Um, very well shut down there by Rehab. Indeed it was. And Prove is going to have this tank for NV into his hands very, very shortly. And... I mean, this is possible to get some damage in this open field, especially because of a couple of the spawns behind the survivors, but it's really an area where the survivors could also just completely shut this down. Hunter, Charger, Jockey for this hit from NV, and I think they're probably going to decide to send that dragon because I don't think this is the ideal hit for this spot. No, I mean, I've seen Rock Tank work a few times here before, but then again, you're that's assuming a lot against a well-coordinated survivor team like Rehab. And there is a pause going out here. But yeah, I agree with you, Rails. I think like they should just get the SI support they want and just send it in. Because the more chip you you risk losing just trying to play artillery tank, the less HP you have on the push where, you know, the difference could be getting an extra punch or two. Right, and I mean, that's something that they really want out of this. If they can even get one down, get a survivor bleeding, open up the damage bonus and keep hitting, that would be ideal for them. But let's see if they're able to do that as we go back live. Proof curving that rock around very nicely, but not going to land onto the survivors here. They're trying to go for a chip as well. They get a little bit, but if you notice, that brick wall the tank is next to is not wallable by the survivors, despite the strength of those Uzis. And they're actually not sending anything in right now. The tank's just curving rocks around here, and he might be committing with this dragon. Well, he's got to now. I don't see whatever other choice he really has. Um, Now he is going to send it in. 
And here comes a jockey up top. Uh, there is a hunter from the building behind. They're going in now. They miss. Oh, the jockey! Jockey got the break Got Rochelle, then charger grabbed her too. And now the tank is just focusing on Rochelle, spreading the love, going on to Nick. Getting wow. a punch. That's actually good damage spread for that tank. I agree 100%. That tank did work in that area. They sent the SI support early, managed to help out with a couple of those pins, and then Proof did a good job spreading that damage around. I think Envy are happy with that, but now they have only a couple more hits to be trying to take this bonus down. Smoke response behind, not going to get chipped though. We have two sets of pills left for rehab as they work their way through. Hunter, Spitter, Smoker, Boomer is probably not the hit that they want to be hitting with when the last choke of this map comes up when they're working into that room off the silos. So they're going to send this now. Hunter is trying to land, not going to work though as that Smoker does get a separation pull onto Dusty for a couple ticks of damage that's not going to be a quad for them but they're hoping to have something inside that room that could do a good amount of damage and i agree with fitz who's typing in the spectator chat this is go-go time yeah absolutely if they make haste right now i mean they probably only got one more attack left to be concerned about um spec had for a second glitched out for me there's like a million seconds left for the next couple of spawns i don't know if anyone else saw that or not yeah, oh, that's, that's been happening on the server for some reason. Oh, there's an attack sign, a guy here. Jockey spawned below and gets railed. I'm, I'm actually not sure. It's like they wanted to go there, but then we're indecisive and decide not to. The jockey got picked because of that. There's only one boom going out. A hunter and a charger still to go. Charger completely missing on Rochelle. And a hunter does land on Nick a bit of damage there. But uh, yeah, Rails, I'm not sure about that attack. I kind of think... Envy were not their usual patient cells there. No, they were not. Spitter's gonna try to get some kind of free spit damage, but it's gonna fall short, and that's gonna be Rehab making the safe room. 2,980 points so far on their home server. They are matching that pace that we saw Envy set on their home. I mean, this is something now where this really comes down to Envy's survivor. I would almost guarantee that we're gonna see Rehab try to get some kind of quad in the field and try to send it that way because that hit is devastating if it manages to land. Just an 1800 point delta now, so things are looking a little bit close, probably a little bit more than Envy would like to see it, but these last two maps, of course, are going to be crucial as well. Even if they were to get demolished in the field at this point, they still would have a slight lead. That tank on map 4 can be deadly on both sides, and let's see how this map goes right here on the second half of map 3. It's going to be a wrist burner tank for team rehab on this, and yes, indeed, Dragon, they are putting themselves in the field and not even sacking that boomer. Exactly. It should be noted as well that, like, in terms of, like, points scored per chapter here, across both servers, NV still carry the edge score-wise. Um, I'm not just saying that in terms of the aggregate lead. It's also the fact that I think NV scores some, like, 3.4k points after their first three chapters on the home server. And I think they have more points on, uh, on the away server, um, on this away server, than Rehab did on theirs. So NV overall, I think I still think they have the edge. As I said, like rehab have now got to the safe from they've got great bonus because of it. And if they can make something work with this tag, that pendulum could swing all the way into rehab's favor here. Oh, indeed it could, and the survivors are taking it just as slowly as they did on their home server, all shift walking in unison as they go forward. That boomer is looking to spawn something, but as you can see, Coach is doing a pretty good job on that right-hand side of watching that spawn. Extremely patient play, of course, from NV at this critical choke point. They have one survivor on the pipe in the center. The charger's gonna be spawning from the front. Smoker from the left going for the pull. Not quite cleared yet. Now it's going to be Charger looking to land and does onto Rochelle with this double boom also going out. Scratch is going out onto this charger, which is not yet cleared. Great three pounds going out onto Proof with this double boom still wreaking some havoc on that higher ping. Dragon, I like the way they did that hit. I like the way they hit. It's got to be said, I don't know if it was noticed on the camera, but that boomer was so fortunate he did not get popped by Kane because Kane, the coach, could hear where that boomer was, but just wasn't landing the shots. And because that boomer just managed to stay alive, he got a very crucial double boom which kind of allowed that charge to take place and get as much damage as it did. Hey, going in, smoker pool, jockey landing. There's a momentary tri-cap there just before they got into the uh, lift.
That is a good amount of damage coming from that. They're going to be do a charger once again for the stairs, despite sending that hit in. And that's a good amount of damage. 154 coming from those first two hits by Team Rehab. And one survivor bleeding for this tank isn't catastrophic, but if anybody else gets down into that range, this could be a very unfortunate circumstance for our survivors here on that higher ping. Boomer, Jockey, Spitter, and a charger, so a decent 2-2. For this area, let's see exactly what Team Rehab can make happen as Envy have worked their way out of the elevator just barely now, trying to get probably another set of pills, and indeed they do find one. So this is going to be four pills still for the survivors as they work their way around. But again, the caution being exercised, it's trying to mitigate any kind of separation that could happen or any kind of stack that could go down, because if this is like a double charge or something, that could be catastrophic. Indeed, as a boomer, uh, jockey, spitter, and a charger. So uh, there isn't um, like a smoker for the separation, um, but there's still great damage potential here. Charger does land triple boom going out. The spit onto Nick, and a jockey too taking coach in the spit. That could have been even more damage, honestly, from that. They land the charge spit, but then that quick clear on the jockey didn't really do a massive amount to Kane, but it's more damage beforehand. Beautiful start from the SI side for Team Rehab, but honestly, this is the point with that tank included, right? So long as they're able to stay fast and avoid getting boomed during the actual tank fight, this is where the map does become a bit more survivor-sided from those first two chokes. So, okay, this is what they have while they're here. They're still looking just to get those distance points as much as they possibly can. Smoker goes out, is going to get the pull, and then the charge goes out to on to Nick there. That, no, sorry, Coach, rather, is the one who's going to be almost in capped by that charger and now you see the damage really starting to stack up prior to that tank especially with how fast rehab have been hitting and it's going to be wrist burners tank aka leonardo aka brian and he has a favorable start to this i'd say dragon yeah um i kind of hope ellis goes back towards the safety of his team he was pushing a, becoming a bit aggressive just trying to clear every single common he could see um and he seems like he's got a sight on wrist burner already like trying to get Bit of chip. Hunter goes in for a 15 damage pounce onto Rochelle. Boomer trying to go for a boom on the roof, but he had too much ground to cover and got easily spotted and popped. And the smoker then pulls Rochelle, who goes down. Okay, so I don't know if the tank is going to work his way in quite yet, but he's starting to get oozied as he jumps across the trailer. He's right above the survivors. I don't know if Kimchi knows he's there. Now he does but they really can't afford to take a rock in any way, shape, or form on this. Like, best case scenario, I'd say they survive this with maybe everybody still fast and committing all their pills, but this has the potential to do a massive amount of damage with this jockey bouncing around in the front and this hunter trying to go in. Charger's going as well, but gets focused down. Hunter manages to land, and that was a juke on that rock coming out by Prove. Wrist Burner now is going to be pushed to second pass, and Dragon, they're going to have something like Smoker Boomer for this. They are, but they did such a great job of spreading the love for their SI hits before the tank spawned that Envy are still in a precarious position. Now, I'm surprised they're as far forward as they are, because with this ping they could easily eat a rock if they fail to skeet it. Um, so they're a little bit too close for comfort in my opinion, but now the tank is coming in anyway. He's already taken quite a bit of chip uh, for his troubles with rocks. So Luba lands and gets a double boom. Charger goes into Rochelle, takes the tanks. Bray, the tank is going to get Coach cornered, and he's given Coach a well, I almost gave Coach a chance to rejoin his team, but they're now clearing the smoker who pulled Nick. This tank is going in, he's still got about 1200 HP. Oh, this kiting too by Ellis Kimchi getting caught out there as he was looking to kill this tank. That is a really unfortunate down. He was playing that so aggressively because he knows the tank is low, but Brian was able to work his way back around and get that corner. He tried to kite the tank by going up the stairs, and that just was not the move in that spot, I don't think. Honestly, I don't know if the survivors are going to be able to pick him back up depending on these hits, and they're going to try to send a hit in right now with this Jockey and Hunter both going for it. Rock's going to go in, going to get skeeted by Prove, and the Jockey is going to die, but there's the boom going out onto Kimchi in the back. Just not what you want to see if you're rooting for Envy in this scenario, but there the tank does go AI. AI tank looking for a punch, not going to get it, and that's going to be the survivors maybe able to pick their friend up, but Dragon, that was too aggressive. Kimchi, I mean, he's such an experienced player. I'm surprised he was that over aggressive. Uh, they probably thought the tank had lower HP than he actually did, and they paid the price for it. 
I mean, I would have actually thought the other three survivors should have gone, but they stayed put. They do get a scratch onto Rochelle, who goes down. A spit delay as well. Ah, oh, goodness. <laughs> this is what I was talking about, the pendulum swing. Oh! And the spitter manages to troll the end cap as well. This is going to be a boomer spawning in the back, triple boom going out, and this is where the relentlessness of these hits you mentioned the fact that these maps can actually turn into endurance chapters right and now we're going to see nb trying to just hold w the most that they possibly can going forward but prove is black and white already under 20 hp everybody else bleeding and slow and this is another rough hit coming up for team rehab it's going to be a charger smoker jockey and a hunter for the quad going in from the back hunter is going to land because instantaneously cleared there's the double cap though from the smoker and the jockey and there's the death on to prove as that smoker in the front just now is getting cleared they are scraping by dragon but they are so close to being wiped here and then it's going to be just about like a I, like a 600 point chapter or so, uh, d differential going into the fourth map yeah and um, this is where i again like i mentioned the pendulum swing they got to a point now where they were performing better for points on their away server performance and rehab and we have a hit coming in here jockey lands a boomer lands as well. He clears a jockey at least, but there's still. Uh, there was a hunter nearby. I could hear a growling, but it turns out he's already dead. But the thing here was that on this previous uh, server, um, Rehab actually made safe from with bonus, despite um, playing against MV on their home server. And it seems like they're going to get wiped here. Now the charger gets killed, but so does Ellis. Um, they're just trying to eke out every single point they can, and there goes a double cap, and that's the white. This is going to be such a crucial tank for Kimchi on the next map, because this is something where we saw Rehab make it with bonus as well on map 4, and that's exactly what Envy are going to have to do here. This lead is on the precipice of being over come by Team Rehab on their home server. It is so, so close in this and and now I mean, okay, fourteen hundred and nine points, right? Is the current delta? No, wait, fifteen hundred and nine points is the current delta here. So that's still over six hundred. But Kim, she has to do absolute work on this tank. That push that he did on the tank there last map was really something that you're not used to seeing. And they have to just completely forget about that. Get good SI hits and try to make these hittables work in the best way that they possibly can. They also can't afford, obviously, to get wiped really on Survivor's side. I'd say this has the best potential for both sides to actually survive it, but at the same point in time, anything can happen on this early tank, and if Kimchi has one more clutch tank left in him, it has to happen right here. This might well be the very most important tank spawn Kimchi plays in his entirety of Left 4 Dead 2. I mean, having said that, he might end up getting the tank on the finale as well. We just have to wait and see. But, exactly. um, you know, if he knows how to use his hitables correctly, we know that he does. Like, he's got to make it work here. Because after Kane's tank on NV's home game, um, they gave such a huge gift to Rehab by allowing him to get nearly 700 bonus on this particular map. And you just can't afford to be doing that at a high stakes game, especially at a tournament grand final with the teams being as they are. Exactly, and it's something where, you know, I understand the idea from last map too, but the tank, I don't think the tank was as low as he thought it was. You know, because he was just trying to go and try to finish that off while his team were still in the front. He actually still had permanent HP when he did that. So, let's see though if he's able to get this redemption tank, and it's going to be map 4 going live right here. Rehab on their survivor side on their home server, dealing with a smoker, jockey, boomer, and a charger. For this first hit, we see the jockey pre-spawning up top. Survivors are making their way out of the safe room. Smoker pull is going to go out. Charger's going to go in, but it is going to get completely annihilated at the door. And they manage to get that insta-clear on the smoke. Dragon, he's going to have to make something work with these cars. But I think he's looking for like a smoker boomer or something like that to maybe get any kind of chaos out. On to Team Rehab. Here it is. Kimchi's tank, map 4 hard rain, RB25 grand finals. Let's see what he does. I mean, if he can, if he can get one of his supports to land a boomer, great. Um, if not, I would want a jockey, a hunter, and a smoker. I think if it was my tank. Mm, they've already sent the hunter and the jockey in, though. It's interesting to see the charger 
be kept in this spot. I think that might be a sack on that as well, and indeed it's going to be. So they're not going to get another charger as long as the Left 4 Dead gods are still following their rules, but that smoker is going to be an all-important spawn, I'm pretty sure, because that's still the way that these cars sometimes land. Looks as though the survivors are putting Dave, though, on the truck, right? The maroon truck in the back there next to the pole to try to block those underneath spawns. Boomer does spawn up and does get shut down. The god car is now on top of the roof, but now is going to slide back off of it. Kimchi trying to be careful with these hittables. That one ricochets off the pole. He's left one in the street because that's what he needs in order to stop the survivors from going forward. He's trying to hit this one on top as well, but now he is going to bail on it as he works his way in. Smoker pull going to land onto Coach Hunter lands in the back as the tank is trying to hit the survivors, but he's got absolutely nothing so far. Turning back around, now he gets a punch onto Nick, still pushing them towards that car in the street. Another punch going out. Here comes the hittable, but it's not gonna land. Kimchi's tank shut down with two punches. That is not what MV needed. And Again, just like for like the same chapter for the on their way to the rehab of just taking full advantage of that and now pressing ahead. I mean, they should not have any major issues to contend with unless unless NV can pull something out of the bag with their SI play. Exactly. I mean, this is now going to force NV to also make this map just absolutely no questions about it because there are only a couple spawns left on this. The boomer is going to sack itself. They have a charger spitter and a hunter for this hit that they're probably going to be trying to use inside. But yeah, I mean, that god car, right, the hatchback has such a potential for flying over the survivors just because of its original positioning. But those hittables really weren't working for him, I don't think, in the way that he wanted them to. And then when he was forced just to do punches in that spot, that's a really, really survivor side area all of a sudden when there's no cars in play. And unfortunately, he only was able to get those two punches that we saw. It's down to this hit now for NV. Jockey Hunter, Spitter, and a Charger for it. So it's the one that they want. And look at how precisely Rehab are playing this now on Survivor. They know there's one more hit before the safe room. Indeed, yeah. And uh, Sol, uh, sorry, Rochelle. Yeah, I is Sol. Just doing some uh, DIY, some interior decoration by chopping down. There is a hit going out of the back. Momentary double cap. Charger missed by charging inside. Getting a fist onto Rochelle. Um, not a huge amount of damage though, that should be the final hit of the map rails and cap bonus. Dear god. Oh yeah, this is exactly what Rehab were looking for. They are going to be holding their W keys on their home server and they are going to take the lead cumulatively from this as well and put NV in a super tough position for them to deal with. Hunter trying to go into the scratches, nothing going. 4,004 points from Team Rehab so far on their home server. And honestly, the thing about it, right, was the fact that Rehab Survivor was playing the best they possibly could on the away server to keep this close. But now it is a 2,533 point difference between these two teams. Envy can still bring it back, but this Survivor side for them, if they wipe here, I think that's almost GG unless then a absolutely legendary tank happens on the next map for NV. And they really, uh, you know, the momentum has gone decidedly in Rehab's favor, but all they can really do is try to pay attention to this half map they've got here, because even if they make it with bonus points, then it's still going to be contested almost going into the finale. But it's also possible for them to shut the tank down. Pretty big tank from Team Rehab's side, but their SI support during tank has been crucial so far. Yeah. Um... In terms of like advantage, NV have scored. Did still they scored more points in the home server at the stage, but now rehab have made a difference in terms of the away sub performance. It's now come to the point where it's now NV who are on the back foot, and they now need to survive this so desperately. They have a lot of fun with that jockey, constantly juggling in mid air. And uh, oh, yeah. finger boom coming out. Charger went in for a charge, then re regrouped with the boomer. Boom is going for the delay. Um, does get proxy boom onto Ellis, so it's just a commons filtering in through the safe room door. Um, the charge is actually quite shit. And uh, lands on Rochelle's head, tries to delay. The smoker does get a pull, and a hunter was thinking about getting a spawn there, but decides against it. Exactly, and this tank is going to be up in the hands of Dave himself for Team Rehab, Soul from Team France, all the way back in the day, trying now to secure this game for his team, and 
he might be going for the same kind of hittable plays we saw Kimchi try for, but he's gonna go with this alarm car first, Dragon, and he's gonna get all the toys he possibly can. Yeah, he's got that one on the main street at least. Um, so he's got similar options to Kimchi. Uh, the boomer did land at the back actually, as it's only a single boom. Uh, I don't think uh, Sol is close enough to make anything work with that, although he's tying a very long moon rock. It actually landed on the telegraph post. Um, Charger trying at the back. I think they're just sacking the Charger there. They want a proper uh, loadout for their support. So they are keeping on to a jockey. They are keeping on to a smoker. And they just got to wait and see what Dusty's spawn will be. But here comes Sol now with his cars. He's got four cars to play with here. That one, very well hit. Goes right at the back. Again, that one's very nicely struck. Just slides down. And there's one survivor on there who's... <gasps> oh, Ellis playing a bit of bullfight. Oh, that car nearly struck both survivors. Went over Nick's head. Oh, but the tank is fully in now. A Rochelle. Rochelle. Oh, she's going to get jockeyed and she is going to get card. That is proof going down right here from Dave's tank. He's looking for the kill as well onto her. Going to get it, I am fairly sure. Unless this hittable screws up, it does not. That is one survivor dead already for Team Envy on their survivor side. That car goes in, then caps two people across the roof. Dave getting the double in cap hit and putting Team Rehab on the course to take the RBT5 Grand Finals. Boomer spawns up onto three survivors, and this tank has 400 health. He's not quite dead, trying to knock this hittable as well. Across the top, Charger Hunter land, and that is the wipe. Going out from Team Rehab, those cars were immaculate dragons. What you need to do is exactly what Sol did. And, oh, there you have it. I think it ended up being that map four, despite having finales, really was the deciding factor in this whole grand final rails. Indeed it was, but there is still a shot. That's the thing. It's 2,500 some points, what would need to happen is Envy would need to wipe immediately on the finale tank or get some kind of quad and then make the boat with a bit of bonus. That's not outside the realm of possibility, but it's definitely all team rehab's game now on their survivor side. Let's see if they're actually able to just send this home by making the boat with bonus. If they make the boat with bonus, this is over. It all comes down to this one tank for NV now. It could be any single one of them, obviously, but I think they probably want to have either Kimchi or Flyby get it, I would say. But, like, even with that happening, it's going to be at least 200-some points, I would say, that Team Rehab are going to get. Their survivor side has been on fire on their home server, but it's been their SI side, too, that has really helped them out. They knifed into that any kind of bonus they could on the side of Team NV, and that wipe last map was picture perfect. Let's see if Envy are able to make this another question on this last map. Spitter, Boomer, Jockey, Hunter for this hit from them. And it's gonna be Flyby's tank. Yeah, we'll see what Flyby does. Here's a hunt and a spit. Hunter getting skeeted. And uh, Nick, was was he kept in a bit more spit because of that one common? Potentially, yeah, but still it's just a bit of chip damage going out. This Jockey is hiding behind, getting pushed now by both Dusty and Dungeon absolutely killed with no more damage going out from that hit. They're going to probably pop that alarm car and then immediately turn the event on. Let's see if, if either of these hits, I think there's only about two prior to the tank spawning, can be positive for Team Envy. Yeah, Charger Hunter, Smoker, and Kane spawn shall be a spitter. Um, really, the Charger doesn't have that many options here with this particular layout, so he spawns first and he, already, he charges the corner! completely missing that charger but a hunter does land a spit and the smoke did land on else briefly there was a fist going out by the charger as well a little bit of damage but uh rehab still very very healthy right now i don't expect to see another play of the survivors going into the porta potty i think that strat has been killed for all time now due to what happened the last time yeah. But I would say that there is going to be, mm, I, maybe not even one more hit, the combat have already stopped, and then Flyby is going to have to maybe throw this Hunter in pretty fast. We do see a pause coming out as well by Prove, so this is a pretty crucial juncture for them, and they're going to need to get, I, I, I still kind of like the idea of like Smoker Jockey or Smoker Boomer or something like that, right? And 
Now they are going to be going live with this. And let's see what they do with this last hit. I don't think there's any more common prior to the tank spawning. Except for now. <laughs> oh, now, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that was a pretty... That was a pretty long pause in the comments there. I haven't played as much hard rain finale recently, but that boomer does get shut down. Hunter's going in for Ellis in the corner, not quite finding him. Charger is going to go out and whiff due to the hunter taking that target. There is one more punch that goes out onto Ellis, but once again, pretty much everything getting up, down, and dealt with really easily by Rehab on their home server. This has to be like the tank of Flyby's career. Reload. Yeah. And we already thought he had played some pretty decent tanks so far this this grand final, but this has to be the mother of them all. Um, <laughs> they do have a spit of smoker jockey and boomer, but so is the tank. Here comes Flyby. Is this his finest hour yet? A single boom does land. I wonder if he if he tends on doing anything with that. Uh, sure, he does spawn in the back of the Burger Tank restaurant as well, so he is nowhere near his hittables yet. He is going to be climbing, and it looks as though this might be a quick commit from him, and indeed it's going to be. Smoker and Jockey in the spawn queue here. Smoker pull does go out, however, on to Nick, who is not cleared until now. The tank was looking to hit him with a car, but he got cleared right beforehand. That car goes spiraling up onto the roof, as does the next one, but this tank is down already at 3,600 HP. There's a clear going out onto Dave. Dragon, that was moments from disaster, but they got the clear. That, to me, looked very panicky, more from NV than it did Rehab. I mean, yeah, Rochelle very nearly... Or was it Nick or Rochelle? I can't remember. One of them nearly got very set up by that smoke for the car. But then I'm surprised that Flyby dropped down to then try and use the car. I mean, I think he could have had a chance to maybe land a uh, punch or two. And now he's at an option where he's got to rely on the cars more than ever because he just doesn't have the health to commit. Exactly, and he's going to be on second pass working his way. And right now there is the boom going out as the tank does have no hittables below. Just a corner going out onto Rochelle. But this is not going to be the wipe. It's a single punch going out. And this is going to be Team Rehab taking the crown in RBT5, barring a quad cap hitting them before the boat. Dragon, that was a shutdown once again. Absolutely, yeah. I just, I felt like Envy were feeling the nerves a bit there, realizing that, like, it was now or never. And I, I don't know, I just think Flyby just made slightly incorrect decisions, very key junctions, and just didn't get much out of it other than two punches. Can't get scared, Jockey gets destroyed, Boomer and Spitter coming in from range, can't do much of anything, and, well, I think it, the, the bells weren't truly really told now, Rails. I mean, I know it's not over yet, but mathematically looking very very grim for envy exactly and the thing that has really powered rehab throughout this entire tournament and throughout their career as a team it's that special infected cohesion limiting envy to 1554 points so far prior to the finale for them of course is really what made it happen for them you know this is going to be a similar score i think to what we saw envy get on their home server but that's going to be the story of it because they were able to play on Survivor side, decently well on the away game to just a level that Envy couldn't quite match. It's going to be the quad cap attempt, though. Smoker, Hunter, Jockey, and Charger with the most perilous and the most important hit for Team Envy here as the Survivors are going to take their sweet time letting the boat pull in as they're going to be shooting all these common in the front just because they know if they make it on this boat, that's going to be the end of things in this match. Mm, they're not going for it quite yet either, just because now they're the ones who want to make sure that they clear out the horde. But now here we're going to see the survivors drop down. Risk Burner doing the best that he can to bait these spawns. Hunter has spawned on the side. Jockey trying to find a different spawn now. Smoker's going to spawn up as well, missing the pull onto Ellis. Jockey is going to die. Charger is going to land for a second, but the Jockey was actually still alive. Able to get a last minute last, so a couple of Charger Pounds do go out, but it was that skeet by Wrist Burner onto Kimchi that pretty much seals it. There is Team Rehab making their way to the boat with an extremely nice bonus and bringing this game home for them on their home server. 5,020 points. And that's the thing, Dragon. They actually scored less points on Survivor on their home server, but they limited Envy so, so well on their SI. Absolutely. I mean, we were looking back at, like, the previous server. Um, we thought Envy's performance on SI was spectacular, but it was it kind of overshadowed, in a sense, just how well 
um, rehab are formed relative to them to, to mitigate the overall damage. And now as we see it, like flip side, everything equal and balanced out. Um, well, rehab pretty much matched the 1000 point average score per chapter on Survivor's side, but they did more overall where it mattered when they were fighting NV on their home server. Exactly, and we're just going to see both sides ready up here right now. Envy haven't quite called it yet. They're going to try to go right down to the wire with this, but let's see if math is even possible at this point for them. I don't believe it is. No, it's not. There's just yeah. no way. Exactly, and I mean, it's one of those where they would be forced to play, you know, better than they have the entire time on their survivor side. Wrist Burner, though, is going to have this tank for Team Rehab on SI. Boomer Hunter, Spitter, Jockey going in. Boomer lands a beautiful triple boom. Hunter lands the pounce. Jockey's going for the intercept. Rochelle is going to then get jocked in the spit for a bit more damage, but actually that Jockey might have given her a bit of god frames. It might have done, yeah. Um, but uh, I think all NV can really do now is just like try and survive the tank and make it onto the boat um just to put it a sort of respectable performance i think ultimately what it will come down to is that map four tank on the previous server i feel like envy could have done a lot more with that and that's probably the biggest like thing the hunter goes onto rochelle the one boom goes out boom are waddling towards rochelle looking for some more company but nobody wants him and he gets destroyed Exactly, and that Hunter did a decent amount of damage to prove at the same point in time. Looks as though Coach is getting that melee from the back. The Pitchfork, of course, is going to be his weapon of choice, because that is one of the new melees that came out in the last stand update. That one can actually cut tongues, the shovel cannot, and we'll see if they're able to keep their position up here in the best way possible. It's going to be a Jockey, Spitter, Smoker, and Charger for the Special Infected. On this, it looks like they're going for a pull charge from the right-hand side, looking for Ellis here, going to land it for a split second. Jockey goes in, landing onto Nick. The Charger goes for a separation charge there, is not going to find it, but that's decent damage also on the flyby. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, a bit of damage going out, but overall, well defended um, by NV, despite the fact they got higher things. They've got a horde event going on in the background as well. Um, they're still in pretty good shape to handle this tank. Indeed they are, and the tank is going to spawn up into the hands of Wrist Burner. As we mentioned before, he's going to be in a pretty decent spot, actually, able to rotate onto this other roof. We didn't see Flyby actually rotate that same way, just because he wanted to go in from the ladder in the back. Smoker pull not going to land. Hunter gets skeeted, Jockey shut down, and the Rock gets skeeted as well. So Envy try and do their best maintaining this bonus, but Wrist Burner is going to be throwing yet another Rock close to them. And let's see if this works now, because that smoker, I think, is going to die. And the tank can still keep a decent amount of sight, I think, from over here. Yeah, I mean, he's still on 50% frustration. Uh, he's still got about 99% of his health for 98%. Boomer gets popped. Uh, Charger does land momentarily, but they save Nick from mid-charge. They do ski to rock at the same time. Brian now on his second pass. And he is starting to work his way in. Loses a bit of chip. Um, to Ellis there, who's trying to score a bit more, being opportunistic there. And now the tank is on the roof, he tries to go in for the hit, and they're all having to move away from him. Nick is still on there, he finally drops down. They're doing very well to maneuver away this tank, but the double cap at the front, there's a jockey onto Ellis, and there was a smoker as well landing at one point, and the coach is now going to be calling, he's spreading the love, changing his tune in a Nick. And the jockey at the back is still going with the smoker scratching. Oh, the insta pull! That's oh. going to be an intercept on Rochelle. Oh my goodness. Envy are going to have two survivors down and everyone on some type of bleed by the time this is over at the least. Flyby looking to try and get some kind of damage onto this tank. Smoker tries to go for a repull up top. They manage to have the tank stop the survivors from picking those survivors back up, but that is going to seal it with that tank. That insta pull right there as well was a beautiful intercept. Who knows if that happens on lower ping, but it worked in this game and that's all that matters. Absolutely. I mean, kudos to NV for being able to survive that particular tank. Um, albeit it's a too little too late in the grand scheme of things. If really, it's just, oh, I'm not at the moment. Hunter coming in, causing distraction. Charger, charged pretty early, was easy to juke. And they did land a jockey at the back of Rochelle, and I think Prue's lagging out quite a bit from what I'm seeing. 
Yeah, that could be, because he just had his ping spike up to 376 on tab. That is unfortunate for them, but I don't think that was happening a massive amount during the rest of the game. Like, knock on wood, this entire finals was extremely smooth, I think, from Left 4 Dead 2 standards like that, aside from the server not being at the right number for slots or having someone else join for a little bit there. But honestly, this has been both sides, you know, showing why they were the number one and number two finishers in this tournament. Team Rehab, of course, defending their dominance in the community overall. We'll see what happens in future tournaments between them, but this particular Grand Finals, I think, showcased two, two of the best teams that the game has ever seen, with Rehab, I think, now trying to lay... Uh, bring that to be true, you know, since they've just been so dominant over the past couple years and they're carrying that forward. Absolutely. I mean, obviously the envy we're seeing here are very, well, somewhat different uh, envy that we saw in the past. Uh, I think that envy in their prime, I think might have had the edge in this contest, um, but obviously they had many years of absence away from the game. They had to do a lot of catch up. They had to bring Flyby back sort of midway through the tournament and considering everything they did to get ready for this they did pretty bloody well i have to admit but really absolutely show why exactly they've been number one for so many years yeah and I, I think this would be a close game on any server right and it's also something where now we're gonna see a last second quad go in charger is going to get the death charge almost That's what is cool. going on that was close to a quad, and I don't know, though, where Ellis went. He, he like, I, that was very strange. I just oh my saw goodness, something. he's back on the pier. That's what I mean. So I think there was a bit of teleportation that went out by Kimchi there because he got semi-death charge in the back as the rest of his team was hit. Left 4 Dead 2 just proving that it remains Left 4 Dead 2 in 2021, but that is Team Rehab officially taking the win in RBT5 over Team Envy. Congratulations to them and commiserations to Envy for one of the best matches I think we've seen in an extremely long time between these two teams. 5,020 to 1,954, so just over a 3k point win, meaning it was about 800 difference between these two teams on the home and away scenario. So that was something I think we were all expecting in terms of it being close, in terms of it being down to almost the last map that we just saw. But Dragon, do you have any final thoughts on this match before we close out the tournament? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I've got to applaud both teams for putting up a seriously good showing. Um, I think, uh, I mean, obviously, Envy will probably be looking back at it, maybe and thinking, you know, we should have done this or that. But against a team like Rehab, who have just been performing relentlessly at the very top for the past several years, as you mentioned already, like, it was always going to be a tall order, I think. Uh, you know, especially years away from the game, uh, being absent, it takes a hell of a lot to suddenly reclaim that, that sort of form you once had. It's not like you forget how to play the game, but you're having to renew that muscle memory from years and years of playing and just compact it into a matter of a few weeks. I mean, that's a tall order for anyone, no matter which, no matter what team you play for, or what your name is. So I've got to applaud um, Envy for their effort trying to like defend their title. But, um, yeah, Rehab just showing why they're number one in today's Left 4 Dead 2. Exactly, and Rehab laid the claim. They were undefeated in this tourney, so they made it to that immaculate 11-0 at the end. They're going to be a force for as long as they play in the community, honestly, but I'm hoping to see other tournaments where we see this level of competition, you know, because that's as close to top tier. That is the top tier matchup that we just saw and teams from different regions are going to be maintaining that uh, practice schedule to play against them too because honestly rehab scrim more than almost any other team that I have possibly seen. So again, huge congratulations to them for winning RBT5 and commiserations to Team Envy as they put up an amazing showing. I just want to thank uh, everybody who's casted these matches, all the teams that played. We had 64 teams in 2021 for Left 4 Dead 2, which is absolutely incredible. So it's all essentially thanks to the community who has stayed dedicated this entire time. Huge shout out to Vanel as well for being the streamer extraordinaire and Krycha for all the work that he put in to this tournament and everyone else who's casted. Big shout out to the admins as well, Alexi and Fig, for making this run as smoothly as it did. For those asking about RBT6, uh, my answer to you is I have no idea when that's going to happen, but you never rule it out in a community like Left 4 Dead 2, especially with how dedicated all of this is. So 
on behalf of all the admins and the staff at RBT5, shout out to Loud as well for his moderation and Vanel for also being a moderator in addition to streaming. And of course, to our friend Sir Please for hosting the servers the way that he does and everybody who keeps the Left 4 Dead 2 community rolling into the future. So on behalf of the admins, like I was just about to say as well, I've been Reels Barlow. Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity to keep running these tournaments, including RBT5, and we hope to see you in the future and that you enjoyed all we casted this tournament. Thank you very much and have a great rest of your day. See you guys.